Even the, the females. Yo, you guys were great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, bro. Bro, can I have a uh, iced coffee? Actually, no, a hot coffee. Give me a black coffee and a sparkling warm. Nice to meet you. Andrew, famous misogynist. Hey, man, I never like to How you doing, bro? Good to see you. How are you? You again? I like my friends. Here now. This is better. You again? Little fucker. Oh, that's fucker. Boy! Tim, we got cigars. Yeah, I got them. Oh, thank you very much. Is it poison or something weird? No, I just like to, like, when people enter me, like, or have me come into their homes, I like to give them a gift. All right, I appreciate it very much. This is, like, the nicest one you could get, too. I just want you to know, I'm not one of them Americans who think the whole, like, prank culture shit is funny. Like, if there's any kind of pranks involved around. You know you see, you Americans, because you're classless, you know when they go up to people and, like, slap each other in the face and go, ha, ha, ha. If anyone touches me on that level, I'm going to fucking murder I like so, it, deep talk. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm 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 it's clean? Yeah, yeah. Promise? Yeah, I promise. Right. So I'm convinced now you're a fucking comedian, bro. By the way, I'm gonna call you out right now. Mr. Tardiness. No, that's what I'm, no, I was gonna wait for him to grab the mic. Call me out? Well, well, well Steiny was convinced that you Yo, were- Yo, shut the fuck up, bro. We got this recorded. Yeah, it was recorded. You you said he was in the kitchen. Tate, Steiny was saying that you were purposely just- Where, yeah. Where's Georgiana? I need a lighter. Sorry, what? What am I doing wrong? Steiny was, I, Steiny was convinced that you were yes. just waiting in the kitchen and loafing just to make a statement. Like, like to try like to be like... in late, like a G. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Am I wrong? I didn't need to. I came in from the desert in my swim shorts. Just... Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. I was in the desert. Bro. Hey, how have you been since we last saw you? I've been good. I've been good. This, <laughs> dude, this is hilarious Well, already. bro, last time we saw you... And you took my few months girl, ago? by the way. Don't remember. What was her name? She meant everything to Don't you, remember. Bro. She meant everything to Don't you. Don't remember. She didn't mean, <laughs> shit. mean shit to bro. me, G. Don't remember. Didn't mean anything. <laughs> One man's Honestly, trash. Honestly, I gave you that so I could Another man's treasure. <laughs> 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 He's still crying and bro. shit. I'm like, bitch, who? Yo. I fucking no. Oh, my God. This is hilarious to me. Thank Holy you, shit. Yo, the Shisha would be a vibe. On, on, the, on the pod? Shisha. Yeah. yeah, fuck it. Dude, this is so funny. When did we link last? How many months ago was that? I think that was two months ago in Croatia. Well, it was Yacht Week, I think August. So maybe three months ago. No. We watched it in July. I did a different boat in August. I see the lighter. Do you mind? What is, uh, what's, what's changed since then? Like, when well, we saw lot, you no? last, you were, this was your, I think we got you. I think it's the most viewed Tate podcast on YouTube is ours. Is it? How many, is, how many is it? It's like, like almost 10 mil. It's more no, than, I've, done, I've done more than that, bro. On YouTube? Yeah. Which one? My grilling was my grilling's eleven point something. You grilling with that, with that chick, me and that girl. Oh, the, that the, date yeah. one. the English one. Yeah. Okay, that one's funny. Yeah, yeah. value. Well, ours is up there, but it's crazy, bro. Time. We did fucking Elon Musk the next week, and I think your episode has like more engagement. Well, I love more Elon. likes, more comments. I, I love Elon. Yeah, he's you dope. Know, what do you he's, love? About he's top E, but I'm top G. So, this is what it is. But he's saving the world. He's doing his thing. I'm a fan of Elon. He's buying Twitter. I think they're forcing him to now, but that's a good thing. Imagine me back on Twitter, bro. If I'm gonna tear them up, they ain't ready for me. <laughs> they ain't ready for me. You turn, use your with your thumb. Steiny. Come on, bro. Steiny. Roll it from the side. Roll it. Roll the side of it. The side of the actual light. Roll it. There you go. There you go. But back then, you were like, I feel like we got you at your fucking highest point, and then shortly after. All the cancellation shit happened. He's not gonna like now the it's point like thing. I'm this is now it's like this your is, top I fucking this it. villain. My, this is my highest point. Yeah. Every single day has been uh has been growth. Nothing's changed. They banned me and I moved to Rumble and now I'm massive. I'm absolutely huge on Rumble. I'm doing larger numbers on every single live stream on Rumble than I ever did but, on YouTube. But overall searches on Google is what they say is way down. Well, is searches, that a fact? No, the search uh, with, with with Rumble absolutely. So my if I did a live stream on YouTube, I'd average, I don't know, 12,000, 13,000 live. When I first moved to Rumble, my first live was 127,000. And now I get like 40 to 50,000 live every single show on Rumble. Whoa. That's so that's huge. that. The Google searches are down because when, they, when the mass media she, machine attacked me and canceled me and started lying about me, obviously there's a spike for all the people going, who's Andrew Tate? Or the right. Didn't know me, didn't know. So there's that spike. But um, overall, it's a trend. I'm around the same place as I was when you... When I interviewed with you, I haven't I haven't seen any tangible. I don't know if difference. you know this, but do you know how many people have joined Rumble since you've been on the platform? Well, I don't want to sit here and take all the credit, but I'm going to. 
even Go though ahead. I don't want to, because sometimes as a man, you have to do stuff you don't want to do, right? But I did I did notice. That's just Yo, part of being dude, a man. you're fucking... You just got to get up and take dude. all the credit. Holy I'm shit. so happy but, to have Tate part two on dude, the pod. This is great. Let's go, baby. I got so many questions. Go ahead, though. But um, before me, before I got banned, I never heard the, the concept or the idea or the conceptualization of someone saying, if I get banned, I'll just move to Rumble. Mm -hmm. I never heard anyone say that. And then after my ban, I've heard it about 50 times. True. Everyone's saying, oh, well, Tate... They banned Tate and he's bigger than ever. So, so no one's afraid of being canceled anymore. Part of that is absolutely massive credit to Rumble and the platform and the CEO because they're visionaries. But also it's me showing the world that if, even if they come at you with the hardest cancellation method, they came at me like they came at Trump. They came at me with everything. But I think, I think with yours and in my opinion too, because I'm, I'm watching everything. When I, I mean, there's always been problems and, you know, an issue with free speech on social media. But I think your, like your situation to me, that was that was the game changer no, it was for one me. Of a kind, though, that was like yeah. yeah. After that, I was like, all right, yo, they made a statement. Like now, it's different. Anyone can be deleted. Like you, we don't have free speech. Yeah. So I think yeah, I think what happened to Tate was a complete. That was the shift. Yeah, I gotta ask you. Did you know, kind of along what you're talking about, Kyle? But did you know, like before you got into all this, that the clip thing was the was the nature that was gonna propel you, like the TikTok? making the clips like because you didn't actually have social media like you weren't like on tiktok posting he's on the gram he wasn't really on the gram like his content was like crazy explosive on the TikTok. ig was just you to probably get dms IG, from girls but were shit, you right? like aware that that tiktok was going to be that thing that was going to explode you to that level because because we just talked about now you're off of it and that's what i'm saying your case is unique because you are a person that like even prior to like your your popularity on instagram or those other platforms you had popularity amassed from your audience that was like sharing your content. Mm -hmm. So that's unique. It's not like a regular person who got canceled and they're like, well, now I'm gonna go to Rumble. You already had visibility. Cause I see you every time I open up TikTok just because people are using your content. So did, was that a part of your plan? Yeah, I'm, I'm a decentralized brand, right? So it you, even thanks. And tell the Shisha guy to bring it. The Shisha no would be clutch. Uh, the Shish man. Is that shisha, his only role? Shisha man. Yeah, he comes here every night and he makes Shisha. <laughs> Bro, that'd <laughs> be literally, that'd make the pod. <laughs> yeah. That's dope. So, um. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of decentralized now. You can't ban the idea, right? Yeah. And they've made a martyr of me. We, we attacked absolutely every platform. When we put together our plan, it wasn't just a matter of attacking TikTok, although it's been super effective. We yeah. attacked every single platform. We did it professionally. We did it completely and utterly and compendiously, and we did very, very well. But um, yeah, they tried to ban me or my accounts, but it made absolutely zero difference. Yeah, to I noticed that. Um, you're right. Most people are not in that scenario. There's been a lot of marketing studies and a lot of people who have done podcasts now who are talking about the Tate method, and how I did it and saying that they're gonna replicate it, et cetera. But no one can truly, I don't think, replicate what we did because one, they don't understand the secrets of it. And two, even the surface level things, which are I'm open to talk about, I, uh, I, I can produce a lot of content and I can do it by being an interesting person who just talks. And that makes me in a unique position in social media, right? So like, if you look at, because Mr. Beast, actually, Mr. He Beast just said that Mr. Beast, say. Mr. Yeah. Beast did a part on me and he said, yeah, yeah, you can do a podcast. You chop it up. Then he's all right. It's cool. The reason uh, in my business philosophy and my life's philosophy is that efficiency wins. Right. If I had to get in a fight in a boxing match and I had to box someone, I had to be as efficient as possible. Yeah. In the Kung Fu movies, when you see a guy doing a backflip to dodge a punch, the reason you don't do that is because it takes more energy to do a backflip than does throw a punch. So you're going to lose in the long run. Right. You have to be as efficient as possible for me to get 10 million views. I have to sit down and tell the truth. For him to get 10 million views, he needs to build a house and get fucking yeah. this but and money and da -da. I'm more efficient than his channel. I so think in the long run, this is why it's hard for people to do what I did because to, to produce content that gets that many amount of views and it's not just talking, you have to spend serious money and time and yeah. it just doesn't work. Well, wait, hold on. I think going off that, he also said that you started this method where you went on every single podcast, but that wasn't true in the beginning. No, absolutely not. You would go on a podcast for two hours, but you would say so much shit that you could clip up that he thinks he's like, I got to go on every single podcast in the world well, to accomplish what you did. He, yeah. I, he didn't relate it like that directly. He just said that. He the said fact, that on the last one. He was just saying just about the he's fact that. He's shitting on Mr. Beast because he got rinsed in poker. No, it's just about the fact that the clips you that play were cards? being used. I, I do play cards. <laughs> yeah, he beat me for 100K. And of course he did. And, what do you mean, of course he did? Listen, of course he did. And Why I'm do you not, say that? Bro, it's just, that's life. And I'm not, I'm, not ins <laughs> I'm not insulting Mr. Beast in any way. I'm just saying that he was wrong about a few things. Firstly, I'm certainly not a podcast for it in any regard. In fact, that's what I'm I turned down 95%. You don't that's think, what I'm saying, bro. I'm, Brad. I'm, and I want to state all this, and I'm not being arrogant. The easiest way you can guarantee a big viewing channel on your, uh, on your YouTube right now is to get me on it. 
Number one guarantee. Do you think every single YouTuber on the planet hasn't tried to get me on their Who podcast? have you turned down? All of that. Name. I don't even know who these people Who's are. Who's big people you've turned down? There's people I, the, the big people who have I said no to primarily is probably because of location. I want to do them in person. I don't want to do it over Zoom, et cetera. Yeah. But I maybe I get maybe 50 podcast requests a day from fuck knows who. So I, I'm not Mr. Podcast. Have I you ever charged to podcasts. go on one though? No, I don't charge people. I allow you all to enjoy the monetization of the million people <laughs> I'll bring you for free because I'm a charitable man. I'm very generous and nice. My house is big enough. Yeah, but um, people. but uh, yeah. So that's the first thing he's wrong about, and and secondly, yeah, you have to sit there in that podcast, and you have to give two hours of fire. You have to give genuine value, and that means you have to live the life worth living, and you have to have interesting stories and struggle and blah blah. blah. And that's the hard part, right? That's so the real part behind it. Let's talk about value then. Why why do you think? Because you're also at the perfect time, perfect like place, and everything too, as far as like this kind of content being sought after, like clips and like content, long format content, speaking content hasn't always been the popular content on the internet. Like it went through phases of like you know, pranks and it's got like family channel stuff. I talk about YouTube specifically, but now it's come to a place where this is like the most almost Im not important. I mean, I think it's the most important content, but it's also becoming the most popular content. Podcasts yeah. are getting clipped everywhere. It's now. insane. So well, you hit right timing as well. Correct. Yeah. And every, everyone has ADHD now. I think the world genuinely, I think everybody suffers with their attention span. I could talk even from me from a personal level. Have you ever needed to know how to do something and you try to look up the tutorial, the tutorial on YouTube, like a phone saying or something? And you load up the video and he goes, hey, my name's Mike. And I'm going to explain to you. You're like, fuck off. Yeah, click, yeah, click, yeah. next, next. And you end yeah. up spending more time trying to find oh it my God. than just watching it. Because <laughs> you can't listen to some idiot. Like, I don't want you to introduce yourself. I don't give a fuck where you live. I don't care if you're married. I, I don't care how ha unhappy Facts. you are. Tell me what I need to know now Bro, for free. So, so like, we, <laughs> <laughs> it's this life, right? Bro. So we, we all have massive uh, ADHD uh -huh. to a degree. None of us have any kind of degree of attention span. TikTok, I think, as a social media, the algorithm is exceptionally smart. Like I said, if I were to tell the secrets of how I've done what I've done, me and my team inside the war room, it's worth billions of dollars, so I'm not going to. But in terms of the way that all the algorithms work, TikTok's algorithm is certainly the most intelligent. It's the most intelligent, but it, it prioritizes and it incentivizes people to just have very low attention spans. And I think as that continues, nobody's gonna sit and watch long format content anymore. Yeah. It's, just, it's just the way social media is changing. The world's getting faster and faster and everything has to happen quick. That's all we care about. And uh, even me, man, people say, do you read books? I say, I can't. They're like, why? It's too slow. I'll yeah. try. I'll try. Okay. And once upon a time, no, fuck, this takes oh, long. Oh, is here, do you baby. Think, do you think the the clip content is also part Wait, of the reason why, here. like. And make us one more, please, bro. What flavor is this? Seems like it's going to be. Okay, that's fine. But my, friends, my friends need one. They're all the way from America. You got to give them something special, bro. The sheesh man. Hook nice them up. Do you have anything mint? Which one you like? Anything mint? Like a hybrid? Like two rum more. One for the big guy because he gets mad. He gets really mad. He's huge. Yes. He's, don't don't piss him off. Yeah. And then the little yeah. guy, he doesn't matter. But hit, hit, hit Kyle up. Yes. Already. Yo. <clears throat> Jesus. Okay. Bro. It's all good. You're good. So You're good. Yo, Steiny can't win, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm it's okay, man. I'm joking. Man. You're my favorite. Boys, You're my favorite. You're my favorite. You're my Say you that go. again. Say that again, please. We heard it, dude. I said it. <laughs> no, say it again, please. It's already going to be clipped up. That's enough. Okay. So as far as... <laughs> as far That better fucking get clipped up everywhere, our editing team. Do you think that clips... At the same time, helped you a ton, or also the things that got people attacking you. Well, yeah, because people are trying to get views, right? And you get views with sensationalism. So, of course, people were finding the most sensationalist or the most uh, controversial things I've ever said, yeah, and then weaponizing them to get as many views as possible. So, of course, that was definitely part of the, me being labeled a misogynist, et cetera, et cetera. But um, I don't, I'm not negative about anything that happened. In fact, getting banned or canceled was absolutely the best thing that's ever happened to me. Which you, you don't regret you, anything. Zero. Because you said last time you had a three-step plan. Was Correct. this part of the plan? Or was I this a little, I was this little fucking no, straight right into No, no, into no. It was part of the plan. I was curious about this. I was part of the plan. And you I thought you were going to get canceled. I knew it was going to get canceled. I said it in every podcast. I knew it was going to get canceled. I didn't expect to get canceled as hard as I was canceled. They came at me harder than I expected. I thought they'll just be like, like a pl one platform. Delete, oh, no, not even that, or just delete my social medias. But they have, they didn't just delete my social medias. They came for me everywhere. Can you walk walk us through like what? How did you find out about it first? Like what was the first thing that happened? Facebook or Instagram? Did you know it was coming too. I hundred percent knew it was coming. So here's how cancellation works, man. I'm Someone gonna... on Instagram made that. Wait, fucking. Were, were post, you bummed right? at all when you hear this, or you're just like, fuck it, today's the day, bro? If I'm from the streets. <laughs> I think I give a fuck about an Instagram page. I think I can go pussy. But I mean, business-wise and like that. Business, bro. Rumble came in with a bag or what? It's no, it's, I already had a bag. I had a very big bag before all that. <laughs> no, the 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 truth is this. So I I knew it was coming. I absolutely not only knew it was coming because of how orchestrated it was. The only thing, and I'll state this at the beginning, the only reason I'm upset by being canceled is because I've expired one of my lives. 
because first you get canceled, then they make up a reason to put you in jail. And if that fails, they kill you. So now I'm down to my last two lives, which is also why while I'm answering this question, I'm still being careful how I'm answering it. I'm not telling scary you scary shit. It's scary because they've now they've given me the warning and I'm still running my mouth. Yeah. So that's scary. But here's how cancellation works. So I knew it was going to happen because there's very, very orchestrated attacks. So NGOs and charities and all these other nonprofit organizations, which of course are profited by the government for whatever reason, you can go down the conspiracy theory hole or it's not a conspiracy theory. You can go down and talk about how foreign policy works, how we install a charity in a foreign country and that charity supports a particular political opponent and that's how we control all the world, right? So all these NGOs, which are non-government organizations are controlled by the government. NGOs and charities start hitting me in sync. So I went to bed one night Every single night before I go to bed, I get a report on all my media and everything that I went to bed one night. I was not in any news articles. I went to sleep at maybe midnight book rest time. I woke up at 10 a.m. and I was in about 150 news publications saying I'm a misogynist with basically the same article the rewritten, the same words, slightly different order, slightly different picture, the same day. Bang, misogynist. 150 articles from Australia to Norway to America to England, everywhere, same day. Then they hit me with the LGBTQ thing at like 25 or 30 of the largest LGBTQ. What was that? What was that for? Saying I'm dangerous to women and, and oh. I'm dangerous and that I'm intolerant in general. So I must be intolerant of them, even though I never said anything homophobic on a podcast. 20 well, you said you wouldn't give CPR to a gay, to a, a male. To a, to a, I would never give CPR to my friend. That's gay. It's a joke. Yeah. It's a fucking joke. So well, that's, yeah. that's a thing that's. So that's joke. what I mean. Yeah. Was some, was a lot of the shit yeah, you I'll, said I, just a joke? No, no, but you can. Cause any, that's how I took it. Any, yeah. Anyone who can't tell when I'm genuinely making a joke and really is going to sit there and believe that I'm going to let my friend die. Well, then they're just a low IQ. Have you said that before? That some of the shit you said was kind of trolling. I don't have joke? to. Like we, we are all hit, we're sitting yeah. here laughing. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I, I feel like I know when you're trolling, like, but yeah. we're also in the game. And I think kinda. it's, fu- I guess. Yeah. One thing. I w- but so hold on. I got to address no, this hold real on. quick. I got something. No, no. But- no, hold on, bro. I Go got ahead. something. Damn. Did you ever, uh, have you, did you ever at one point underestimate how powerful your influence was? Okay. Let no, me, where you're me. like, where you're like, Jesus. Cause there was a point where how could you me not? and my friends used to be like, yo, you can fucking have multiple girls and you might not have said that directly, but you had that kind of effect. That's his fucking question. That's a good Real question, quick. no? It is a good question, but- Why are you really, overcoming me? Because I'm just saying, the reason why, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna play the devil's advocate here, why people, <laughs> they're the same thing they're talking about, the influence, right? We know it's a joke, Yeah. but the people that they're saying who don't know it is, is a joke and why they're trying to protect them are the younger kids who Correct. can't dis- Correct. decipher. Correct, and I'm a professional, and as a professional, I accept the reality of scenarios. I don't get emotional about them, even if they happen to me. So uh, there is some, I'll sit and say, yes, there is some valid argument for the cancellation and I'll accept it. It's none of the reasons they've told me I was canceled, but the reason I don't think those valid arguments, uh, the reason I don't respect those valid arguments is because of how orchestrated it was when they actually attacked me. If they were to sit there and say, Andrew is a person who's lived a very unique life and he's had a very difficult experience and he understands the nuances of certain situations and perhaps young male impressionable minds don't completely understand the delicacies of what he's saying and it's going to teach young men to be less empathetic and perhaps uh, adopt attitudes which are not inclusive that I, i'd get that and say you know what yes i'll i'll have to sit here i can't sit here and lie yeah. and say that a 14 year old won't, won't misunderstand my content sure my rebuttal is that a 14 year old will misunderstand anybody's content that's that's a larger argument about the internet as a whole if you put a 14 year old on the internet 90% of what he's going to digest is probably Yeah, bad I don't for think him. that's your yeah. fault. That's not my fault, right? Yeah. So that's the that's the first argument. So al- although that although I agree with that point, it doesn't apply if you're going to apply that to me, you have to delete everybody. Yeah. But, the, but the other thing is, Facts. they didn't they didn't do that. First they came at me with the misogyny thing and then like I said, 35 LGBTQ whatever uh influencers or whoever with 5 or 6 million Instagram followers all did a post on the same day, same wording, same time, bam. So there's someone above these people saying, we have to paint a picture that he's so evil they accept the cancellation. First, that's what they do. They have to paint you as evil, then they cancel you, and then they continue the evil painting once you don't have a voice. And the idea is that everyone believes you're evil and you're dead and you're gone. That's what they're trying to do. But the orchestrated, the way it happened, like all the media at once, all the LGBTQ at once, then all the teachers unions piped in. Teacher union in Norway, teachers union in Sweden, teachers union in Australia, teachers union in America, all these teachers unions saying that our, our boys no longer listen to us in school because the boys are asking the teacher what color their baguette is. And then oh it's Andrew God. Tate's fault. Oh so then God. all the teachers unions in sync, same day, bang. And I'll sit and say to my team, look. This is all the same day or it, different, it, different yeah, days? Yeah, so no, yeah. They, they, first it was some misogyny stuff and then they hit me with the LGBT stuff. Day so by day. Day by day, some new orchestrated angle. 
Yeah. And it was very orchestrated. So I said to my team, cancellation is next. We're about to get canceled. And that, it took about two weeks later, they eventually deleted me. That's, yeah. that's what I'm, I'm trying to get out there. Why do you think, okay. why do you think you became so powerful though? In terms of like this, what what really got you to that? Core? Well, I can like, tell you why they're scared of me, which kind of answers the question. Is it because people were you were willing to say what people were thinking, but they didn't want to say, or? Yeah, well, I'm I, not I'm not magical, right? I'm I don't I didn't put a spell on the world. I've been saying things that people have to a degree semi agreed with or been yeah. thinking for a very long time and couldn't say. Yeah. And yeah. I came along and said water is wet and became the most famous man on the planet by saying things that a lot of men go, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. I'm not saying everybody agrees with everything I say, of course, but if they didn't agree with anything I said, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't have got anywhere, right? Right. So that's part of it. The reason I think they saw me as such a threat is because of the influence I had over the number one demographic they want to keep control over, which is the military age males, the young males. That's the number one most scary demographic for a government. For sure. Because they're the people who cause revolutions. They're the people who are going to go out and die for your army or be the backbone of your slave force. So when you have a whole bunch of young males who sit there and go, we don't want to listen to the government anymore. Tate said they're all full of shit. Then they're <laughs> going to sit there and go, well, this guy has to go. He's not good for society as a whole. It's yeah. the young men they're afraid of. Yeah. yeah. Cause yeah. they're the rebellious ones. This I want to the- hear how it like happened though. Like what was your first, what was the first thing that got deleted? Meta got me first. So, uh, the they result- made the first move. Yeah, it was all the orchestrated attacks. I only found out I was deleted from Facebook and Instagram from the media. So, after they deleted me, I don't know if it was instantly. It seemed pretty instant. It maybe was in the first same 15 minutes because I was, I was on Instagram. It was fine. Put my phone down, whatever. And then I got started getting sent articles. Meta bans Andrew Tate. So they did a press release to the, the media and told, right. uh, told them that I'm banned. Does it bother you that no one comes to your aid? Or were you expecting anybody to be like, have your back? Well, that's a, that's a, that's a different question because actually the banning taught me a bunch about who's who's actually true to themselves and who's true about free speech and who's a clout chasing piece did, of shit. Did anybody stand out and come to your aid or like be like- Yeah, the, I was surprised by people on both sides. Like mm-hmm. I had people whose names I won't say who called me on the day and was like, this is some bullshit Tate. This is yeah. garbage, da da da. Patrick Bet David was a G, solid. He goes, where are you? I said, I'm in Spain, I'm working. He said, I'm there tomorrow, boom. Like he was a G. Like we had a whole bunch of people like that. And then also you had the cucks and the cowards. Yeah. Like Logan and his boyfriend who were cool <laughs> with me. Until I got canceled, and then sh- then instantly because they're afraid of being canceled, when completely you say, did a one eighty. Yeah, how were they cool with you? When you say they're cool with you, what? we were going back and forth. We had a little bit going back and forth. Uh, we followed each other on on Instagram. Uh, I promised to buy Logan a Bugatti on my show. He he was saying we well, got something. out of that. Yeah, we got out of that. Yeah, we were going back and forth, and it was all kind of cool. There was no animosity between us. But the but second they were I, like, were they inviting you places? Like, what was the deal? Yeah. They, so. That's how a, you how you know that they were cool with you because they're telling you what? Because they were doing they were doing episodes on me. What's their thing where they talk about the internet? They have a show where they talk Impulsive. about the internet. No, there's another one like a vlog one. The night shift. I don't, I don't know. They had some show. I don't watch these things, right? I just get sent them. So they were talking about us, and it was in a semi positive way, and we were replying. We we're going back and forth. So I knew it was a, it was a pretty it was pretty. It, there was no animosity. There was no insults. It was pretty yeah. cool back and forth. But the second I got canceled, they came out, he's, he's dangerous, his rhetoric is dangerous, and just completely cucked out for the establishment. And I know, and the reason I think that is, is because as an intelligent individual, as a professional, when I sit there and understand that someone above these media organizations have given them a directive that they sure. have to enforce upon the populace, what they're also gonna do is sit there and go, okay, who does Andrew speak to? Who's his audience? 16 to 25 year old males. Who's our talking point to that audience? Logan Paul, who he's in our pocket. He's an agent of the Matrix. So I don't think you. Have, I don't think you have the same audience as Logan Paul. Wait, wait, wait. No, but no, oh, no, but they think but they I, think that. they think they maybe. think that. They, so, my audience is different, but they all sit there and go, "We have to make everyone think Andrew Tate is bad." The young men like Andrew Tate. Who do the else? Do the young men listen yeah, to Logan Paul. So make Logan point. Paul say bad but, shit. But Brad, you, we said it. that. Yeah, but we what? said that we thought that Logan like had to do that. Well, of course so he on, did. Hold on, but you think someone actually told Logan, "Hey, fuck yes. this is what you need to do." Fuck yes. Yeah, I, I like, think so that too. Straightforward. I don't fuck think yes. it was YouTube. I think it could have been his manager. His manager, yeah. YouTube, fucking who knows who? But maybe even honestly, said, maybe even himself. Maybe he's like, "Yo, I gotta, I endorse I mean, Tate. I gotta take, backtrack." Do you take that shit personal, or you're just like, I don't it. take it personally because I don't know the guy personally. I don't take it personally, but I do have a dislike. for and just as on a personal level in general Switch for up. cowardice, hypocrisy, switching the up. switching up on people. That's just not how I roll with my team. If I was cool with you guys and you all got canceled, there wouldn't be a fucking sp- split second where I'd go, well, you know, they've just been canceled and I might get canceled. Just you're a bitch. Just who cares? You're my boy. Like, I, and even if you're not my boys, if I like somebody, I like somebody. If I don't, I don't. The way he 180'd, and it was a true 180 because you don't go from semi-cool with someone to sitting there saying his, his, 
rhetoric is hateful. Evil, yeah. He's he, like sitting there. We're I'm wondering like, bro, why, who who gave you this directive? And they, why did they even have to say anything? Because someone that's, yeah. that's what me and Brad are yeah, saying is why why didn't they just stay affiliated? Right? Why didn't point? they just stay quiet? Because but I think the Matrix guys. I'm telling you why. If the let's all be professionals here. Let's be smart. The Matrix has decided to character assassinate me. They have gotten all of their media establishments, all of their bullets. They fired every fucking bullet at me. <laughs> do you think they're not going to sit there and go, what other bullets do we have in the chamber? Who's his primary audience? These guys. What do, who, which cuck do we have who obeys every word we say, <laughs> who also is somehow listened to by some of his guys, Logan. Go to a podcast. Andrew's bad. Whether it was YouTube, whether it was his manager, whether it was his boyfriend, fuck knows who. Someone sat there and said, do this. And they sat there for two hours saying, Andrew's so evil. You don't, you like don't. a bunch of pussies because they were told to. Yeah. I was, I, told we talked to, about bro. it on our shit. You I was, think I just, was very surprised. You don't think he just wanted to just do it for fucking views? Nah, no, definitely not no. for views. No way. No. It's not, not for views. No. He didn't want to mention my name at all. He, he doesn't some, like saying my yeah. name because everyone just writes underneath he and talk to you, you're a bitch. To be fair, the, the, the worst part was just the fact that he had his own thing that he went through and then say like, this person doesn't deserve a second chance. That's the worst part. Yeah, but so he did it. And it's also, there's also a massive fear of him being canceled also like he got canceled and cried his eyes out on tv to him that was the most traumatic experience of his life yep. and when someone comes there and says tate's just been canceled they might cancel you you better fucking do this mr logan sure. he sits there and sells a soul and, and what's interesting is this i'm PTSD. not PTSD. yeah yeah pdsd i'm not expecting him to <laughs> i can't believe they canceled me <laughs> like that was a hard time for him he ain't had a hard life that like me. was fucked. he ain't had a hard life like me but no but the but the truth is this i'm not expecting him to agree with everything i said jake said look i don't fuck with everything tate says but Free speech is free speech. Yep. You're a full, if you're a full grown man and you don't advocate for free speech, there's something wrong with you mm -hmm. because then you don't understand history very well. And you understand that the first step of tyranny is to shut up free speech. You have to get one side of the, of the story only and destroy all opposing viewpoints and tyranny is next. So I don't give a fuck if he agrees with what I say or not. I don't care if he even likes me for him to sit there and say, I think free speech is bad. Just makes him look like a dumbass. And if you look at the comments of, on his video, look yeah, at the comments backlash. on his video. He got everyone ripped yeah. him to it's pieces. a lot of backlash. Yeah, because yeah. everyone knows he's full of shit. Yeah. So, and, and so what, that's what I'm saying. It taught me a lot. It also, there's some other people, I won't say their names because I don't want to make more beef, but there were some other people I was talking to who were cool, super famous, and I was going to do their show, and they totally wanted me on the show, and then I got canceled, and they instantly shit themselves. And that went both ways. Like I was speaking to Patrick. How long ago was that? No, I was speaking to Patrick Bet David in the up run to getting canceled. Got canceled. He said, don't care. We're doing it. Yeah. And I was like, boom, gangster. Other people were like, oh, you got canceled. Mm, and shit themselves and pussied out. Which also shows me a lot. I'm not going to say their names. I'm not going to call them out. But they know who they are and I know who they are. But what about Pierce Morgan you just did? Pierce, Pierce is Pierce is. And I, by the way, Pierce I just is. want to say real quick that I think it's bullshit, and I thought you did really well in there. They just argue, they, they interrupt, interrupt. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the main thing with Logan too, that when he took it too far, was what he said is that if other creators collab with them and give Tate a platform, like that's not okay. Yeah, don't give Tate a platform. Don't make the Tate brothers more famous than the Paul brothers. They just, just geez, it was a bit jealous, but he he definitely got told well, to do what he was done. What do you what think about like? I think he started maybe a domino effect because we saw Kanye just bought a private platform. You see that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Parlor. You think you think that's parlor. all game where he he acts out to kind of like follow? No, you don't have to act out to move platform. I think that there is a lot of pressure behind the dam, and this is another thing I want to make public. I want to make I want to make clear to the world. I don't have beef with the social media companies. I don't mm -hmm. have beef with Susan and YouTube. I don't have beef with Meta and Zuck. I don't give a fuck, right? I don't have personal beef with these people, and I'm not even mad at them for banning me. Sure, right? But. I do think, and like I said, I talk about things from a non-emotional standpoint, from a professional standpoint. I do think they made a mistake. And I'm not saying that because it's me. I'm not saying that because I want to get back on. I'm saying that because when you do something like they've done, like the mass cancellation of me, it's very, very important that you do not come across as tyrannical. You have to be seen to be fair and non-biased. And everyone for a long time knew that wasn't the case. And banning me added more fuel to the fire, added more pressure to the dam. The water behind the dam is these people are not fair. They control all the information. They're not non-biased. They're actually extremely biased. They're tyrannical. And what happens is when you have a lot of pressure behind a dam, it takes a very small crack for the whole thing to explode. The crack that was missing is someone to be canceled and become more successful than they were pre-cancellation. As soon as that happens, nobody's afraid anymore because nobody wants to deal with their bullshit anyway. For sure. So where do you no, think that's where goes. they made a mistake. Where do you think this goes then? Oh well, yeah. Well, what do you think about Kanye? He I, acted out. Now he just bought a platform. Oh well, yeah. The well, what, what do you think about what Kanye's doing in general? The dude's a billionaire, right? So it's kind of like he's in a slightly different position than Joe Schmo. But he's do, he's going on like the podcast tour right now, and he is saying some. He's saying way crazy. I, lo I love shit Kanye too, and I, I think it's the same thing where like some of what he's saying, like I agree with, and then some shit's just wild. Well, yeah. What's your opinion on on what he's saying? I right haven't now? watched all of what he said. Um, 
I just, I, I don't think he would have ever really truly been scared of being canceled anyway. So Kanye, although I know what you're saying, I don't think it's the best use case. I think it's the general YouTuber and Twitch streamer, who, the gen- yeah. normal guy saying, cancel me, I'll go to Rumble. It's weird. He the guy get- with 40K subs is now saying, I'll go to Rumble, don't care. That's their problem, not Kanye. Their problem is all the low level creators going, well, if you're gonna start fucking my video over nothing, I'll just move, I'll just move, I'll just move. And then there's gonna be a mass exodus. And then they're gonna sit there and go, when did this all start? We banned Andrew Tate for no reason. We should have fucking kept him on the platform. I think they fucked up. And, and, and I really genuinely believe that. And what happens is it's kind of like, if, you, if, if you're a tyrannical person, you have to sit and try very hard to not come across tyrannical. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you're a jealous guy, you have to try very hard to not look jealous. It's like you, they haven't sat, they haven't sat there and looked at the optics of it, sure. and, and 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 now they're sitting there realize they. I know they analyze data in real time at the point of the cancellation. In fact, because my team analyzed data, right? So I'll tell you this. So when I got canceled, I had the war room analyzing data in real time. So at the height of the media storm, there's there's apps you can use to measure responses on comments, likes, etc., up up votes, down votes, blah blah blah. At the height of the media storm. It was about 55% of comments on any post involving me was positive and 45% were negative at the height of the lies. It's now 95% positive. So now that they fired all their bullets, that's because that's all the media machine can do. Do you think people switch up though? They can't print the I'm misogynist again. They can't print the same lie. They shot me with every bullet. I'm still standing here alive. It's like the, the zombies come and you've emptied your clip. He's still here. And, and now everyone loves me and they're sitting there and they fucked up. Where does this go though as a whole? You know what I'm saying? Not just for you, but I mean, as a whole, like, is this going to create like overall just rebellion? Do you think like, cause we're like, where does this end up in, in 20 years from now? If more people are dipping and going to other platforms, just new platforms going to or, rumble. or not even rumble. just, not even just content wise. I just mean life wise. Like where, where do you think this is going? Cause everything shifts, right? Power is always shift. Yeah. So is this going to turn to a point where like, I don't know, uh, the the right side, which is typically the side that's being more like quieted, is that going to be then in control and then attacking the left in the same? Because it just swings. Yeah, you're right. Life life, life is cyclical and it goes in a pendulum. And right. I, do, I do think that there's now a change happening in society. I do think it's going to shift. But um, won't it be just as bad if it gets to the other side and then the other side is just feeling the same exact way? Like, how do you think we find a balance genuinely? I don't think we'll ever find a balance. I don't think we will, bro. I think it's... I just I how I think, how, I think humans the society is just so I agree. fucked up. I agree. How much how much do you hate to see you leave and now everybody loves you? Everybody wants. Well, you everyone back. loved him prior to leaving. Too, no, as well. but you said there's a bunch of negative comments and shit. Yeah, but, but it's now- a very the thing is with the internet, it's a very vocal minority. That's the truth about the internet. You yeah. sit there, negativity, they, yeah. the negativity. You go, oh, people don't like him. It's like four dudes with no life. Like the truth is I've never had a negative interaction on the street ever. I've been approached yeah. by thousands of people. Like it, everyone loves me, right? We're it's more very similar neg- than you think. It's very, it's, it's a very negative minority. And, and it's a lot more than that in person. Yeah. So. <laughs> but yeah, I think everyone's going to be moving to alternative platforms. Obviously I'm on Rumble. They've been fantastic to me. I have nothing but good things to say about them. But fuck content, the overall thing. Overall, I think that social media is going to change to the point where I think the next big thing for a platform to do would be to, to allow the content creator to own their subscribers. Imagine there was a content, oh, wow. imagine there was a platform where you owned the subs. You had their emails, you owned the subs and you could choose any platform you wanted and you could bring your subs with you. Sounds like you have a plan. How does the platform, that's what that, I'm that, that, Well, I, I'm Sounds just saying, like a if a platform were that. to do that, where would yeah. you Where would you build your following? Would For you sure, build your, you'd yeah. build your following where you own the data. So what these, what these large companies do is they want to control the data for as long as possible. And that's going to be disrupted when someone comes along and says, you can build your following and you own the data and you own the following. And if I'm not good to you or you think I'm tyrannical, you can take your following somewhere else. Then they're going to conquer and then YouTube's going to fall. Well, that's I the thing that's always got me going crazy is like this this whole like all these platforms are money driven at the end of the day and i don't think people really realize it that the data that they're grabbing like for example the whole period of like uh when the world shifted to social media and mainstream media lost their power on television they realized oh shit we need to own social media we need to have our people here because at the same time like they were losing money from advertisers who were like we're all going to social media now we're not going to go pay the television because no one's watching anymore how do we get people on our website or on our social media channels and they did the same thing like that like almost youtubers have done for years which is like create content that is like drama driven or negative driven to get people in so do you think that will ever change though because it's always going to be content based and content driven yeah i agree with you i don't think it's necessarily going to change but i do think that people as they wake up are gonna understand that having control of your data is more and more important. For sure. Yeah. And it doesn't matter whether it's your social media followers and your subscribers, 
or your email list or even credit card processing, right? Like you guys have a business and you're charging for credit cards. Whoever's doing the credit card processing for you, you need to be able to go to them and say, give me all those card details. I want to use someone else. Yeah. And if they say, no, we're going to keep them, then you're going to say, fuck you. Then I'm not going to, maybe it's too late now, but when I start my next business, I'm going to work with the people who allow me to have the credit card data from my customers in case I want to use somewhere else. We're going to start getting our data back and that's going to take their power away because anything that's free for us to use on the internet isn't free. We're giving them our data in payment. That's I believe, what we're doing. I believe we're paying for why, it yeah, At what point though, you know what I'm wondering too? And I think what Rumble doing is great obviously steve our guy who got deleted as well for no reason no strikes at yeah. all just completely deleted he's on rumble Love which steve. is great and he's uploading soon but at what point do at what point does the agenda start like at on only fans now you can't post a swipe up link to only fans at what point does like instagram sit, like flag rumble and say like yo you can't promote rumble on instagram That's or right. like does the app store like i think the next step for them is like the app store might be like yo we don't want rumble yeah, matrix on matrix, like, matrix i feel attacks. like I don't know. I feel like they they're just going to keep taking it further and further. Ma matrix attacks. And and I'm, I I mean, obviously, I don't know. But I of course, I think Matrix attacks are going to come. Is Truth and, and try. Social on the App Store still? I have, I have no idea. It is? Okay. I don't know. Matrix attacks are going to come. But I think when you have strong leadership and you have smart people and people who certainly anticipate that, and also when you fight for good and you're truly doing the right thing, God smiles upon you. And I don't believe that tyranny lasts for long name a tyrannical government or a tyrannical situation in history that lasted forever you can't name one there's no matter what whether it's the roman empire whether it's the third reich whatever when yeah. you're tyrannical sooner or later there is a revolt and they're going to try their very best to do certain things but once the general populace understands that this is bullshit and this is a version of the truth or two sides of the story then there's going to be a mass exodus and they can't stop that yeah it's, it's crazy too because Kyle's always said that no matter what you're not going anywhere and uh, what, you just did Sugar Sean's podcast, right? Yeah. How many times have you seen that on TikTok? Which one? Just you walking in the fucking hotel with Sugar Sean. We see it 500 times. So like, what does that do when you're like, yo, no matter what you do, I'm still there? Well, that's my, that's what I was saying earlier at the very beginning He's of my answer. Certain lives. That's this what I was saying very, yeah. at the very early in my answer. That's what's concerning to me now. What's concerning to me is that. Where do uh, they come next? Yeah. They, but do you feel like you're the only guy that can like overcome this cancellation because like, nobody else has been able to well it's kind of like the four minute mile i don't even know the story of the four minute mile but when everyone was running long distance running everyone said a four minute mile was impossible and everyone was attempting it it was impossible and then one guy yeah. did it one day and after he did it 10 people did it in like three weeks yeah. and it's the it's like the belief mm -hmm. so i think a lot of people when they're canceled go i'm done now nobody else has my I'm, I'm gonna i will sit here and openly say my network and the things i do and the unique way i approach it and the war room and the organization i have and the money i have and the influence i have is unique most people don't have that however people will have the morale to go, I've been canceled, but you know what? I'm not quitting. doesn't matter. I'm not giving up. All right, just make a new account. Bang, back to work, back to work, back to work. And on a long enough scale, if enough people do that, there will be inertia and momentum behind it, which will make a shift in the universe. It will attack the matrix in real time. It's belief. I have a question. It's about belief. You must believe. I believe in you. You must, yeah. no, but you must believe. I Everyone fucking must believe, believe in, in you, themselves. Bro. That's Andrew, the key. Where did you develop this stuff? Like where in your life did you start to develop this? Like at what point were you like, this is the person that I am? Was it something like your, your father taught you? I know you had some stuff there. I know he passed away, but like, how did you develop the person that you are, the human that you are? Because obviously it happens over time, but like, what were the major key points in your life? You're like, oh shit, I'm starting to realize this is what's very important for me, right? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I'm not sure I, I, I know the answer completely and utterly. I've, I, my entire life, I've always woken up thinking or feeling like I had an enemy to fight against. As long as I can remember, I've always had, I was, a, I was a professional chess player when I was a kid. So when I was four, I woke up and my dad was sitting there saying, you're playing this Chinese kid, he's good, right? So I always had that. Then I had professional fighting, I had 87 fights. So my whole life I had some fight coming up. And now I wake up and the matrix is attacking me. So I, I've always woken up feeling like I had an enemy. Mm -hmm. And that certainly shaped my reality. It definitely shapes how I act and shapes how I think. I've always felt like I was in war if that makes sense. Have you ever felt like you were your own worst enemy? No, in fact, quite the opposite. I, yeah. I, 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 I've, I've had a healthy fear and respect for all of my enemies to the point where I've understood the only chance I stand to beat them is to have as many allies as possible and the most important ally is my own mind. Yeah. I have enough people who dislike me that I don't have the luxury of doubting myself. So even at the height of the cancellation, right? When they were coming at me with everything. And I haven't even told you some of the stuff they come at me with. I'm about to tell you, and it's, it's a lot more scary than getting deleted from Instagram. Sure. When they were coming at me, absolutely. Even the people close to me are going, you're dealing with this well. And I was like, I have, I have now innumerable shadow figures trying to destroy me. 
If my brain betrays me, I'm really fucked, right? Like I can't go down that path. So no, it's, it's actually completely the other opposite. I've galvanized myself against internal enemies. My, me and every single part of me is all on the same team and always will be. And I think that's because, like I said, my whole life I was battling against something and someone else. But I'll tell you some of the scary shit that happened, man. Like um, reporters were doing articles about me and they found my members of my family, found my mother. They started harassing my mother and p- people outside her house and protests outside and trying to track her down, all this crazy stuff. Then what happened is reporters start calling all my ex-girlfriends and saying, hey, I know oh, you've noticed fuck. Andrew Tate's in the media. If you have a story uh, about any of his misogynistic comments or anything he did oh, bad or anything bad he did when you were together, we'll pay you 50,000 pounds. Do you know how many girls were contacted? 15. That I know. <laughs> okay. So, but the point is this, that's effectively a bribe. Yeah. Do you have a bad story about Andrew 50 G's? Right. That's effectively a bribe. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that this actually testament matrix, this is testament to what a nice fucking guy I am. Because if you were to get the average man and say, well, take your last 15 girls you fucked and offer him 50 grand to say something bad about you, <laughs> most dudes are going to have a couple chicks say something bad. None of them turned on me. Not a single one. They all text me saying, this report is trying this. Rolling Stone's trying they this. They turned on the Daily that, Mail's the trying bag? this. They all just found my number and, and told me and just said, look, they're trying this, da, da, da. They all told me, luckily. 15? 15. But, the, but, but this is, and this is what's genuinely, truly crazy. They, they've somehow tried to convince the world that I'm the face of misogyny and I'm somehow dangerous to women. There's not a single woman, not one who's come forward. Name the woman who's come forward saying I victimized her. Name one. I don't know. But there's not a single woman saying anything well, bad about me. There's I agree a lot with of shit said about you. I was curious. Like there's no actual, actual, besides it's the all, clips and there's nothing. Like they talked about you got like raided or some shit. Yeah. We yeah. can talk about that. Like what, was well, that something that actually happened? Yeah. So I got, I effectively got my house and I do actually think this was a large part of my cancellation. I don't think I would have got canceled if it wasn't for these rumors of human trafficking and shit. But oh, because um, then I, they start really looking at you. I got short shorts on the podcast. Sorry, guys. I was in the desert. I normally wear short shorts too. On yeah. The um, but yeah, so I effectively got swatted, but it was a very unusual scenario and an unusual situation. And now I'm looking back with my chess playing mind. I think that that was part of the whole plan from the beginning. Yeah. Somebody was having a conversation with someone close to me, said they'd come out to visit, cool, whatever, came out to visit, came, hang around the house, everything was fine, chilled, no problems at all, left, no problems at all then said they were kidnapped. Like, it doesn't make any sense. And then the police, obviously, uh, I have respect for the police force. I'd hate to live in a country where you call the police saying that someone's kidnapped, they don't respond. Of course they respond, they come and check. Yeah. You got swatted, right? A fake right. call. Yeah. The story was that her boyfriend found out she was there and he thought she was. I heard these different versions of the story, but the truth is the police came, saw the CCTV, saw that well, she came and left. She went and got pizza. She went and got Uber. This is bullshit. Threw yeah, it out. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. They, they ignore they the fact that it. it's thrown out. They run with it, right? Yeah. His house is rated for human trafficking. That's all they say on repeat, on repeat, on repeat. And I'm thinking that was orchestrated. Someone sent her to do that to begin the attempted downfall. But attack. you're past that, right? It's all over now because it was never a thing anyway. Was I, but I wasn't even arrested. I was I was taken to the police station and questioned for an hour. They went to the CCTV and I went home the same night. The, the one thing Stupid. I do want to ask you is, do you ever fear that cancellation is going to go above social media? Like, let's say like- What, like this? That's no. what he was talking about earlier. No, that's what but I'm saying- This is the cancellation, No, but I'm bro. saying like a restaurant or a state's going to say, yo, you're not welcome here. Um, A restaurant can get fucked. So can but I'm saying fucked. like, you know what I mean? Like if, if they're like, yo- We've talked about it. We don't want you to visit here. If Dubai did that, I'd be upset because I love Dubai. But, um, like, is that a possible scenario or something you worry about? Perhaps, but there's literally only two or three countries on the planet I'd care. Yeah. If most countries, if they came and said you can't visit, I'd be like, don't give a fuck. What are those countries? I think that's that you ridiculous care? too. Uh, I love Dubai. Yeah. And yeah. genuinely, I don't like godless places. This is why sure. I mean, this is my problem with America is it's godless. I don't like it. I like where you live amongst a religion, regardless of what the religion is. Mm-hmm. I would hate to I would hate to get kicked out of Eastern Europe, but the chance of that happening is zero because they agree with everything I say. I would hate to get kicked out of Dubai, but the chance of that is zero. Anywhere else, I wouldn't care. I, mm-hmm. I don't care. If, yeah. if whatever Miami? other country. Yeah, would you go to the States? I know you said you didn't want to go there, but I I it's godless. I don't feel comfortable. When I'm in Miami, I look around and I say, okay, there's hoes. Okay, you're hot. But it's just drugs, parties, degeneracy, sluts. It's just, I don't like the vibe. I don't, I don't feel at home there in any way. Where's the church? I just feel like saying to these bitches, go to church. Go to church. Stop telling me about your OnlyFans. Go to church. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I don't like any of it. So I don't want to go. So I don't care if they ban me. Yeah. So restaurants, I don't care. Countries, I basically don't care. And the real cancellation is putting That's the bullet in That's a clip, eh? Tate, why Tate yeah, hates but I'm Miami? Just, yeah. But well, then, do, you have, do you have like, but you just, hold wait, hold on. Do you have like a favorite spot there? Like if you had to go out there, do you have a favorite spot? In, in where? In Miami. 
Oh, I, I don't know. Where did I go? You partied there a lot, I thought. Yeah. Well, he, also, trap? hold on. You come here with a bunch of girls, though, and you say the same thing. What do you mean? Like, you came with a bunch of girls. Uh, it's not yeah, true. why are you calling them out like oh, that? Oh, they're on camera. No, you're right. You're right. They're not on camera. What are you talking about, bro? That's fair. But, um, no, but it's it's just, America's just not a place I feel an affinity to. I'm not really interested in. And it's the seat of most <laughs> of this garbage. It's the seat of, of the satanic garbage, which is being inflicted on the world. We're in a war of yeah. good versus evil. And if you look at some of the most degenerate things on the internet or on TV or things that are happening in the world today, they are coming from the United States. So I just don't really want to go there. I just don't feel an affinity to the place. Like if you were to look up the most crazy shit, it's some American every single time. Some sure. six-year-old decides he wants to do something. He shootings, decides he's this. Shootings. shootings murders. It's yeah. just like, why do I want to go? What, what's there? Mm -hmm. Like I, there's Lambo garages and nightclubs here. Like what's, what is there in America? Nobody can tell me. Because there's nothing there. Do I don't you, want to go. Do you think you would have had the same success if you only came at content, like from the positive male, like in, enforcement aspect? That's a good question as well. Um, and Joe Rogan said this, and he was quite right. He said, like, if I would have stuck to the male positivity and avoided anything that could be deemed misogynistic, I could have done better on the longer term. I agree with that. But I also think that relationships between men and women are such a large part of being a man and the male experience and I also think that nearly every man, no matter who you are, whether all of us sitting here or everyone watching at home, has had a fairly similar life path. We've all grown up, fell in love with that bitch in school. She wouldn't fuck. She fucked someone else. Fell in love with her first girlfriend. She cheated, heartbroken, whatever. We've all had a similar story, right? So we all have an affinity to it. And I think that your relationship with women as a man is one of the most important things you're going to go through in your life. If you look at a man who's truly content and truly happy, he has a good relationship with women. And if you ever look at a man who's miserable, he might have all the money in the world. But his, his, wife, his, general, wife, his women, wife doesn't like him and he's miserable anyway. Women in general a, or one woman? No, but I'm saying it's such an important part of the masculine experience. It's hard to talk about positivity and masculine values and how to approach life and never mention relationships with women ever. So have you been through something like that with a Every, woman? No, everyone, everyone's had like girlfriends they broke up with and missed. And da, da, I'm you don't have a, Do you have any specific stories of yours in your love life that, like, that kind of like showed you that? No, I don't have anything that's... I don't think it's outstanding or any different than anyone else I'm, has. It's yeah, funny. I understand. Do you know what I mean? So how, you think you think talking about that stuff, that type of content, which is so important because everyone has dealt with that kind of stuff? I think it is. I mean, like I, I can. I, another thing I, I do is I react to a lot of the questions I'm asked, and I can say the eighty to ninety percent of the questions people ask me, whether it's a super chat or it's a Q and A or if it's live, is related to in some way a chick. Yeah. Like eighty percent of the questions are, my bitch doesn't like me anymore. Why? And I'm like, because you're a fucking loser. And and that's and I have to but give, do you them, give them advice on how to change it. Yeah, yes, I do. I but I I, I tell how, them the how truth. do you define a loser though? Just like a bum. I uh, my my basic message, which has been largely misunderstood, is people always sit and say Tate says all these crazy things about girls and da da da. da. And I, I I say that I can only speak from my experience, and I am not naive. I understand that I'm living a very unique masculine experience, and it's a it's a top tier one. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine living life as a man any other way. And as a man, you need to get up and work hard and become a top tier male, or your life's gonna suck. That's basically what my message is. When Joe Schmo comes and says. I'm Joe Schmo. I'm not you. What do I do? And I say, I don't know. Because if your bitch will fuck Joe Schmo, then that means Joe Schmo's your company. And you and you're a loser. So you got to stop being a loser and get a bitch who doesn't fuck losers. Like, what do you want me to do? And that's my basic message. But, but you can't avoid that whole topic, right? Yeah, for and, sure. And, and then, you, you know, even just what I said there, they're going to take it, chop it up, say you said this about women, fuck losers, and they're going to come at me with it. Yeah, I think have you backed off talking about like the woman type of shit now? A bit. I mean, it's a bit boring anyway. What's there to say? Right. You said whatever you, you want said to say, everything. right? I think women's uh, women stay with men they respect. You have to be a man worth respecting, and I say this all the time. So, are we rocking with female pilots now, or are we? I still, don't want, I still don't want chicks flying my What way. do you think about it? What do you? <laughs> you're, you're, but wait, you're jokes I'm for just that. asking. You're what do you, what do you think? I, I still don't. And that, and but that's not an insult on women. I'm not attacking women. I think that women are amazing, beautiful creatures, which are better at a lot of things than men are. However, in certain scenarios where there's high pressure in the result of an unfortunate circumstance, I think that men are calmer under pressure. But so I would prefer to have a male pilot. I'm not. I'm you're not just going to clip that first part, though. To be honest, oh, exactly. Yes. So, so I can't win. Goes. So what I can't do, win. What do you think about a stay-at-home dad and the and the wife works? I think if that makes him happy and they're a happy couple, then that's what they should do. I can also sit here and say that I don't think that that would be a happy the couple dynamic for very long. I don't think it will last long. That's mm -hmm. my personal view. I think that thinking about the mom's that. getting slammed in the I office. I don't think I can marry. Well, well, don't I think check that rich is going to marry me, bro. What the fuck? I don't know. I thought that that was, that was your plan. No, I can't get that. Okay. I think I think once the chick like... Sonny's trying to be a stay-home dad or what? Exactly. No. 
He's been talking about it a lot. I have never said that once. Oh, okay. Just one. letting that, making that very clear for the audience, by the way. I'm going to get the bag. Don't, nobody has to worry out there. <laughs> well, the audience is here, dude. What are you talking about? That's okay, right sorry. My fault. He's looking Jesus. at the chicks on the couch. When, when, uh, I, when, when, I, when, when I comment on that, I'm not saying that people shouldn't do that if that makes them happy, whether it's the man or the woman. Everyone should live and do whatever makes them happy. I'm saying that I don't think that relationship will last long because I don't think a woman would be happy providing for a man on the long term. Mm -hmm. That's my overall, that's my personal view. I'll say that. Some people sit there and go, that's misogynist. Some women work hard. I'm not saying some women don't work hard. I'm not saying that some couples won't work. I'm talking about as a generalization in general. I think that that couple dynamic, I don't see that working in the long term. That's yeah. my personal view. Sorry, world. Attack me. Well, you cancel me again. What, right, what, what really, ahead, Brad. Yeah, yeah. What really makes you happy now? <laughs> right now? Hanging, <laughs> hanging with your boys is the funnest thing to do, though. Huh? Hanging with your boys is the funnest thing to do. Yeah. No matter yeah. how much money you have, it's still always going to be the always best. Always the best. There's nothing There's nothing else to do. I like, agree. Hanging with your boys and, and talking shit and laughing is always going to be the peak human experience. Yeah, well, once you have it all, like, where do you go from that? Like, you, you get more you just shit, need, more I shit. Think how many shit? close boys do you have? Yeah. Like, you, Tristan, who else? Two, three. Tristan, you want to come in here? Yeah, you don't want to come on here? No, he's good. Hanging with your boys is always going to be the peak thing. No matter, it doesn't matter if I have $100 million or I have $10. I'll be still sitting with Tristan laughing. That's, so then, that's, that, that's you, always going to be the funnest Have you guys been like that since you were born? Yeah. yeah. Was that, that taught to you or it's just like a bond? It was semi-taught to us. We tried to fight when we were a kid and our dad, our dad wouldn't have it. Fuck yeah. He was like, no, what do you, the world's out to I, get I you think boys. People, You're on the same I team. think there's a lot of people that, that don't understand the importance of like getting along with your relatives. And that's something that you guys show, I think, people envy. Well, yeah. I mean, if, you're, if, if you have a brother, the idea is that you make the best friend possible out of him, right? Well, what, why else would you have a brother? Well, no, but I think there's a lot of like families that lack that but this is the thing and this is where i'm about to get oh, i need to shut up man i'm about to say some shit you're already canceled yeah what whatever. they want to they want to get rid of the family no i can go down a whole bunch of tangents. Oh, that's a, yeah that's, I, a, that's true though yeah. but i can go down a whole bunch of tangents but in my experience these shorts are so small one second oh you're good yeah Where's the sheesh guy? Are you, going for like the Dan, are you going for like the Dan Blazarian type no, of vibe? I, just, with the I, I was swimming and then we went to the desert and then you guys are here okay so it's just one of them things um, in my experience, I have a lot of guys who come and say, I'm not as close with my brother as you and Tristan. I want to be as close. Why are, why are we not as close as you and your brother are? And 95% yeah. of the time, the, the answer is because of chicks. Because, Whoa. No, because you have two brothers growing up. They hit puberty, whatever. They both get different girlfriends. They move in with their girl or their girl doesn't like them rolling with their brother because they're always out doing man shit and, da -da, and their girl slightly isolates them to a degree or their chick doesn't like his chick or whatever. There's some chick involvement. So if you want to truly have a close relationship with your, your brother or your friends, you need to have a relationship with them where you sit and say, all right, cool. I, me and Tristan have done this multiple times. We've had girls sit there and go, I don't like your brother. That's a problem because it, if, it gets, if, it's, if it gets anywhere near a decision, you're going to lose. So you either like him right, right away or just fuck off. But Damn. most people won't do that. Most people will be like, well, why? Well, yeah, he was a bit rude to you, I guess. Okay, we won't go over there tonight. Mm -hmm. Please suck me off. And then it just it all falls apart. <laughs> that you is have to make very, a choice. That is very Yo, true. Copy. It's true, bro. You have to make a choice. You have to make a decision. And we always made the decision to put our brother above a good everything point. else. I never thought about that. And, and, it, and it ties into lots of things. It also ties into economics. I, I've said this story before, but I'll say it again. When I was growing up in Luton in England, which is a, a highly Islamic uh, town, there's lots of Muslims who live there. They, I was friends with some Muslim guys in college and they used to laugh at me all the time. One of them was like 19, worked in Tesco and had a Ferrari. I was like, bro, how do you have a Ferrari when you work in a fucking, I think he worked in a chicken and chip shop. He worked in like a fast food restaurant and had a Ferrari. I was like, how do you have a Ferrari when you work in a, a fast food restaurant? He said, cause I got nine brothers and we all work together and we share the car. I was like, okay, but why do you share the car? He said, no, no, you don't understand. You. I won't use the racial slurs, but he was like, you people, you, because you and your, your three brothers, you all grow up, you all decide to get with your girl, you all go pay different rents, you all disappear, all your money gets spread out now, you're taking your girl on holiday and paying a different rents and you're all separate. Me and my nine brothers live in one big house. If we meet a woman, she moves into the house. The men are all focused on making money, the women are all looking after us, cooking clean, and you got nine men in the same house trying to pool their incomes. That's why we own the houses you rent from us. It's different, brotherhood first, it's different. You people don't think that way. You fall in love. You fall in love with some bitch and you run off. You go pay her rent. Sure. It's, it's like a different mentality you know, and that's why they win. I think it's funny because a lot of people that have talked about you say, I agree with a lot of things that he says, but there's those two things that I just can't agree with. Boo-hoo. But how, how, like it's, it sucks. It doesn't suck because that's life. I don't expect people to agree with everything I say. But a lot of things that you do say are very important. So those messages for, for the younger audience, it sucks that that's not 
like that's not getting taken in, but the bullshit's what they look at. Well, yeah, they find the little bits that they can use to purport and try and pretend I'm a bad guy and they amplify them. That's true. But I can't think of anyone else on the internet who I agree with 100% of what they say. There's people sure. I really like. And yeah, we're living in a world now where people are asinine. They have the slave mind. What's interesting is there's a guy who's built a TikTok account and I think he has like a million followers. And what he does is he walks around college campuses asking people if they've heard of me and then Whoa. if they like me or not. It's brilliant. So he goes and goes, have you heard of Andrew Tate? And they're like, yeah. Do you like him? No. Why? He's misogynist. Define misogynist. And they go, yeah. Whatever, bro. And just what? They don't even know why they dislike me. Yeah. And it's the slave it's mind. Taught to dislike. Yeah, they, they can't even tell you a quote I've said. What's he said bad about women? Uh, 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 he's a piece of shit. They can't answer the questions. They don't know. So a lot of these people are just slave mind programmed, right? No and girls ever pressed you in public? Zero. Absolutely not a single female in public has ever once said anything negative to me ever. In fact, quite the opposite. Oh, yeah, I wish there was more men like you, protect, provide, et cetera. Yeah, people take everything out of context. I've never had a single chick ever mad about anything I've ever said ever. Not one. Now, maybe if I was in godless America, I might get some girl doing some dumb shit. I live in countries of civilization. I live in a civilized society, but I wanna, I've never had it. I want to switch gears a little bit. So earlier I was talking about self-love. And you said earlier about like your brother and you have all the money, you have all the stuff. What's really important is like the time you spend with basically your loved ones, right? So my thought in life is that the most important thing in life is love, yep. being able to love yourself and love those around you. Yep. Um, I wanted to get your opinion on that because I think more kids, because obviously a lot of kids are gonna listen to this and watch this, but I think more people should talk about that idea and how do you find that? Um, I wanted your experience of finding that uh, as a whole. Yeah, and that's a really good question. And we live in a hateful world and it's kind of scary because whether it's the sensationalism that the media outlets are getting from the clips by purporting hateful ideas, like you just said, whether it's the weaponized virtue, which is basically pure hate against people like me or the people they don't like, cancellation as a whole is hateful. It's a hateful act. They'll sit and say, he's so bad. They don't, for, let's use my example, misogyny. Do you think the people who are attacking me give a single fuck about do you think any of them donate to women's charities? No, do you think any of them protect fuck. women or, do, or care about women? No, they just hate me. It's hateful, right? Yeah. So uh, we live in a very, very hateful world. And uh, I think love comes from a position of strength. I think you always have to be a strong person to love. I think you have to be an intelligent person to love, which is why stupid people are so hateful. And you have to work on yourself. And I think you have to become strong in your body and mind to love things. It's not easy to love things and people when they do you wrong. It's not easy to love a woman again after your last one did whatever. Yeah. It's not easy to do it. You have to be a strong individual. And that's why I think love comes from strength, which is why I always say strength is so important mentally and physically. I say that all the time. It's all I talk about. I say that if you're a man, the easiest way to improve your life in every single possible way is to just work on your physical strength and your mental strength will follow and, and you become a better person and you can love. You know this yourself. Look at the size of you, right? You go in the gym, it's the biggest guys that are the nicest guys. True or false? True. Because <laughs> yeah. they, they don't have this ego. It's the same. If you walk in a fighter gym, the most deadly dude in there is going to be a nice guy. And it's interesting how it's, the perception is that you're going to be a bad guy because of the way you look. Completely. A lot of things like the things that you say or the things that you're doing or like the, the masculine uh, stance that you take, you're a bad guy. Yep. And it's just, the whole thing is just crazy to me how, how it happens. But I just, I, I really want to emphasize that for the people listening is like self-love is the most important thing and being able to give love and share love. Like what else are we doing all this shit for? Completely. And you can't pour from an empty cup. And before you give love to anybody else, you have to truly love yourself. And I think the yeah. easiest way to love yourself as a man is to be proud of yourself. And to be proud of yourself, you have to decide who you want to be inside of the metaverse, inside of the matrix. You have to decide the character you want to be and try your best to achieve it. Why do you think people struggle with uh, being proud of themselves? I think because they know they're failing. I think that most people failing in life know very well they're failing. And it doesn't matter what avatar you decide to absorb or who you decide to be. You can decide to be it and you know true in your heart if you're giving 100% of your energy towards becoming it or not. It doesn't matter if you want to become a famous musician. It doesn't matter if you want to become a bodybuilder. It doesn't matter if you want to become, become a pro fighter. It doesn't matter what you want to be. You know in your heart if you're actually trying or not. You have to decide what you want to be and try and become it. And a lot of the people who are genuinely unhappy or miserable in their hearts know they're not trying that hard. Well, and they also, I think they also focus on what everyone else is doing right or wrong and then judging outward. And everyone's like focused on this outward reflection of like what that person has and versus what they don't have. And it's all just a, like this just cycle of negativity. Completely. And it's just, it, we found ourselves, especially with social media nowadays, we found ourselves like most people because maybe they're not mentally strong enough to understand like, oh, wait, I need to create my own value instead of looking outwards and saying, well, fuck what that guy has or fuck that guy because I don't have it. But like, how do you think we fix it? Or can we fix it? And there's another question I want to, I want yeah. you to try to answer too is like, can everyone be successful? Do you believe that? Good question. So firstly, I'll answer, can everyone be successful? Okay. Um, 
I think the world would be a terrible place if everyone had a free mind. You do need the slave minds. I've heard you say that. As annoying as they are, yeah. you do need the slave minds. You do need the guy who believes that, you know, working the gas station is important and he's good at it. You need him. It's good. You need these yeah, people. Yeah, but what if that guy just doesn't know any better, though? It's good. Or he's this is what we're talking about, Good, though. fine. The world can't all be, you know, mansions on the palm in Dubai. They can't, they can't all be that. So I, it, successful is all about self-definition, which is what I was saying at the beginning. You have to defi- decide who you want to be. And if, you're, if you wanted to be Joe Schmo and you pull it off, then you'll be a pretty happy, content person. It decides who you want to be. I think the people who are miserable, it's the, di- it's the gap between their expectations and their reality. That's where the misery lies. Yeah. My expectations were always enormously high. Even when I was a nobody, I knew I had to be filthy rich and a kickboxer, and I knew I had to be the kind of guy that people gave Were a shit. Were you happy at that you know, point? I, I know, but I knew, I, I'm, basic things. At the age of 15, I knew that if I'm the kind of guy that if I raise my voice, people are going to care. I'm not yeah. going to be the guy who starts shouting and everyone thinks it's funny. I know I'm going to be the kind of guy who is genuinely a formidable opponent in all realms of human endeavor. I know I'm going to have money. I know I'm not going to take Where shit Where did that nobody. come from, though? Because I just you can't just. Ha- yeah, I know. And, you I, can't and, just I, and I understand what well, you're saying because my whole you, life you I felt the same like thing, there's bro. always more. I know that there's more. Like, but I think a lot of people have that. Of but, course. But the people who are miserable are the people who don't try hard enough to obtain it because I actually believe, and this is another thing I'll say, I believe the universe is very giving. I think the universe and God himself is very giving. I've yet to meet somebody in my, all my years who is genuinely giving 100% of themselves day after day, doesn't snake anyone, firm handshake, look you in the eye, doesn't lie to nobody, and tries 100% who doesn't get what they want. I've never seen it. Every yeah. single person who doesn't have what they want, there's something in their story that doesn't quite add up. I've yet yeah. to see some guy who, have you ever seen a guy who eats right and trains his ass off and never misses a gym session ever not grow? No, ever. No, never. Not ever. what? Not what? A- a- grow. Not grow. Oh, not make ever. It, 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 it's just, that's the way the universe works, right? So if you're truly about it and you're truly trying your absolute best, you're going to do it. And I, that's what I believe. I believe the universe is extremely giving. So when I meet somebody and they go, I really wanted this and I don't have it. I say, you didn't really want it. You're a liar. Well, out of, out of all like the successful people, most successful people in the world, would you say that all of them have have like something in common in the sense of like some sort of hardship in their life? It's not. Well, yeah. I mean, trauma is extremely important. And this actually goes back into answering the first part of your question, which yeah. is interesting. There's a study I read about stress and it was uh, saying that stress, they uh, stress has a placebo effect attached to it because the placebo effect is extremely powerful. So they found some of the most stressed people in the world and they split them into two groups and they're all equally stressed. They all have a bunch of cortisol in their blood. Yeah. The people who believed they were, that stress was bad for you and that stress can hurt you and they believed those media articles were dying earlier. They were having heart attacks and they were having stress-related illnesses. The people who believe the opposite, who just said stress is part of being successful, I like stress. When I feel stressed, I do my best. It makes me anxious. It turns my brain on. I like being stressed. Lived longer than average. The point is the same drug, how you look at it and how your body anticipates it, how you feel about it affects the real world results, which goes back into what you were saying earlier about the jealousy. You're saying people look on social media and they get jealous and it demotivates them. That's because because they decide to be demotivated by it. Do you know what happens when I get jealous of somebody? I fucking beat them. Yeah, yeah. If I look at somebody who has something I ain't got, I will take it from them by hook or by crook. Well, I was, I, when I watch I, other people on social media and I see someone killing it, like whoever it is, someone, that fires me the well, fuck up. I love it. Like, I love, I wish someone could make me jealous. It's hard now. I got everything. I wish I could look at somebody and go, fucker, I'm going to beat you. Would you say jealousy is the number one? Like, because a lot of people reach out to you, right? Would you say that's the number one spark for motivation? Well, I don't think motivation is a real thing. I, d- I don't believe in motivation as a concept. I think discipline is real and I also think discontentment is real. And I don't think it's possible for anybody to stay in a scenario where they're truly uncomfortable. If you fall asleep on your arm and your arm really starts to hurt, even in the deepest sleep, you're gonna wake up yeah. and move your arm. If you sit there and your life has been in a rut for seven years, you are semi-comfortable in that rut. Sure, there's days you're pissed off. Sure, you're semi-annoyed by it. But there's also days where you just play video games, eat pizza, and you're kind of cool with it and it's no big deal. If you were truly unhappy and uncomfortable and discontent with your scenario, you wouldn't be in it. So I think I don't believe there's anybody who's truly when I was broke, I couldn't sleep. Yeah, I'm not saying that. Please understand me. When I was broke, I couldn't sleep. I'd be trying to go to bed thinking, how the fuck these people have Ferraris? I want a fucking Ferrari. I couldn't sleep. But what were the first steps that you took when you're like, yo, I got to fucking change my life? What was the first thing you did? So people out there that might be going through it. But I never had to like change my life because my life was never wrong because I always knew I always knew what I wanted. Listen, and I was I, always doing my I best to get like, it. I think that's like built within people. This though, is, hold on. This comes down to self-awareness. Everyone is, like I said earlier about the outward reflection about what's happening. People aren't taught to be self-aware anymore. People are taught to just like, like I said, look at that guy, what he has and be mad that you don't have it. Or like, if something's going on with me, I don't want to look inside and say, what's actually happening with me? Why am I this way? Why am I the person that I am today? Everyone goes, 
it's an outward. Like if I have a problem with a girl, oh, it's her fucking fault. Oh yeah, she pass the blame. Up. Pass the blame. So, everything has been that way. And 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 I just want to talk more about this kind of stuff because like we're asking these questions like about like what well, this. But I want to figure out deeply how do you think a man specifically in this case is able to look at themselves more comfortably without holding the judgment, the fact that they don't have the stuff over themselves, because we need to talk more about this kind of shit and critical thinking as well. We'll get into that next. Completely. You're totally right. I, th I think there's two answers to the question. One, I think a lot of it came from chess because chess is the most ruthless game on the planet. And what chess will teach you, people think chess guys are nerds. Chess guys are psychopaths, man. They're ruthless. No, they're smart. They're are, you, are you nasty at chess? I'm all right. I'm not. What's your best like game, like strategy? My, my ELO for anyone who knows chess ratings is like 1800, which is, it's, it's all right. It's a pretty average considering my father was a grandmaster. It's not even that good, but oh, I was eight, shit. I was 1800 when I was eight. I got no better. Right. Okay. So, um, cause I stopped playing, but chess teaches you that no matter how chess teaches you that if you lose at some point, you made a mistake. It doesn't matter if it's the smallest mistake. It doesn't matter if you just took too long, too long to think to make the right move and you run out of time on the clock. At some point, you fucked up for you to lose that game. It's 100% accountability with no luck. That's what's so important about learning chess. That's the first thing. And the second thing is you need to, as a man, adopt the mindset that absolutely everything that happens to you is completely and utterly your fault, whether it's good or bad. And most men don't have Facts. that. Most men don't have that. When the Matrix was attacking me and they were destroying me, when they're calling up my exes trying to get fake fucking charges on me and put me in jail, when they close my bank accounts and I use 10, 11 million dollars, when they ban me on all, across all social medias and lie about me, when they harass my family, when they, I'm sitting there going, this is my fault. All of this is me. I got here. It's my fault. I'm not going, that was unfair. It yeah. was orchestrated. The NGOs worked against me. Because that is not helpful. So it's accountability. It's 100% accountability in all things. But also when I go out there and I start to Bugatti, it's like, uh, that's me. This is my, this is my fault. The car is my fault and the big house is my fault and everything that ever goes wrong Successes is my fault. And the failures. Yeah, absolutely. You have to take complete and utter accountability for everything. You can't make excuses ever. Yeah. There's never an excuse. And you're right. People try and put things on the outward, outwards on the outside. It's interesting. I remember watching Forrest Gump about five years ago. I was on a plane. I can't remember where I was flying. And the beginning of Forrest Gump has a scene in it, which I don't think many people actually have ever analyzed or anticipated or understood what the scene means. But when he's sitting on the bench at the beginning, <laughs> think about Forrest Gump. He's sitting on the bench at the beginning and there's a feather blowing. Yeah, he nailed this yeah, shit. Yeah. And then it <laughs> lands on him and the movie begins. Yeah. What they're saying with that is Forrest is the feather and life has just pushed him all over and put him in all these unusual scenarios. Life has directed him everywhere. Yeah. That's, what the, that's what it's saying. Sure. And if you're going to be the guy and you're going to allow life to happen to you and you're not going to happen to life, then you're at mercy of the wind. Perhaps it might work out okay, but it might not, right? So you have to be the guy who goes, okay, the wind's blowing in this direction. Fuck them. I'm doing this. You have to come to life. You can't let life come to you because if you let life come to you, then you're going to be living inside of a matrix and a system which is designed not for you to live your best life. It's designed so, for you to comply. And how, how, how do you benefit? How do you think men can build more confidence in like deciding their life instead of just letting it be decided for them? Yeah, so they have to take absolute responsibility, which is the first thing. The second thing, they have to get competence and competence is going to allow you to have confidence. You're not going to be good at shit if you're bad at shit. You have to be good at things. You're only going to be confident at things if you're good at things. I know what I'm good at and what I'm bad at. So you have to go out there and take risks and you have to make mistakes and you have to risk it all. And, and once again, this comes down to competition. I think competition is such an important thing in, in the masculine world. Yeah. I, oh, grew yeah. up, I grew up in the chess world and I went into the fighting world. It was all extremely competitive. It's competition driven. You can't make excuses. If I sit here and say I lost a fight, cool, you lost a fight. But I lost a fight, but my gloves, when they were wrapped up, my gloves, my hand was hurting. And then they excuses. wrapped up. Bro, you lost, G. Yeah. Like no one gives a fuck. Yeah. Like you have to understand that excuses don't matter. Nobody cares. Life's binary. Yeah. Winners or losers. And you just have to take absolute responsibility for all of this. This is crazy. The same thing that Volonovsky was talking about when he was in a, we were, did a, we did a pod with him before the UFC thing. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, it was aired last week, but he was talking the same thing. He was in a fight, UFC fight, big fight. And he's fighting this guy and he broke his hand, I think in the early rounds. And then he talks about coming back to his corner and saying, I broke my hand. And they're like, they didn't respond to him. And then he comes back again after that round that he did well in. And he, he won the round. He comes back, he says it again. And the guys are like, why do you think we didn't say anything the first time? Like, shut the fuck up and you have to do this because yep. this isn't going to change. Yep. And people are so caught up when things happen. They're just like, people they, make excuses. They go in circles Yo, and they go in circles. They make great. excuses and, and they play and, victim. Yes, that's what go, I find a lot. And they go, this that's is the why, this thing. is why. This happened to me because of this, because of my childhood, because of my past trauma, because of my yep. life, whatever. Yep. But people are so not taught to like look inwards and go towards those things. Well, so I think, well, you think victim playing victim is a, it's, it's like an a, easy way out. Yeah. It's a laziness. It's, it's a laziness. It's an easy way out. It's a good excuse. And it also makes you feel better about yourself. Me and my brother have another thing we do. We do this all the time. If either of us are ever complaining about anything, we say, 
we have this, we shut each other up by saying, what do you want? Do you want therapy? Because if you don't want therapy, what are you talking about it for? Sure. And the, the main reason people complain about things is to get a dopamine rush, right? I'm unhappy, <laughs> but if I sit there and I complain about it and you give me a little bit of sympathy, I feel better. Yeah. Right? So you get dopamine. That's sure. why they're complaining for dopamine. If someone comes to me and complains about something, it, the best thing I can do for them, because I'm a philanthropic nice man, because I'm Mr. <laughs> nice, is tell them to get fucked. I don't care. Shut up. Yeah. That's the best thing you Figure could do. When your friend comes and goes, bro, and this girl, and you know, I really miss it. Look, I understand, bro. She ain't coming back. She's fucking next guy. Yeah. Shut up. You gotta apply that to Stein. Shut up. Yeah. So I'm trying to sit Stein here. Needs what? That, dude. Just did, what? what do you want to talk about it? Do you want therapy or do you want to go fuck some pussy? <laughs> I never do, do that. Yeah. You, but, bro, but you that's feel why bad people, for yourself all the time. What I turn that into motivation, bro. What the fuck? Next yeah. time Steiny complains, now I know what but I'm this, saying. No, Straight but, up. But this is why people complain. They complain to feel better. And then this ties into who your social circle is. Does your... <laughs> does your... <laughs> does your... Bro, yo, keep going. He needs it. Yo, why are you trying to yo, turn this on like me? This, look, look. What? Go this like is this. how he gets look. all buddy, buddy. Go like this. Go like Go like this. Go like this. Hey, we got you, dude. And then, then keep going. Keep going. <laughs> uh, we're actually boys, so I don't know why you're trying to do this. Dude, I'm it's I actually yelled. Yeah, could you put your hand on him? Oh. He needs it more. <laughs> so you can't uh, just do this. Come on, dude. No, I mean, um, I've lost my train of thought now. Yeah, no, no, I haven't. You um, lost so, train of thought. You come into my house. You, no, you don't know. Okay, go ahead. But, but, a lot, but a, lot, a lot of this comes down to your social circle. Because there's a whole bunch of guys out there whose friends accept <laughs> excuses. Hell yeah. If your friends will allow you to make excuses, you're gonna make excuses. If sure. your family let you make excuses, you're gonna make excuses. Gotta you're gonna complain and feel better. You gotta be around killers who don't accept that shit. If I have a, if me and my, let's say me and three friends, there's four of us, and we all decide to do 10,000 pushups a day, and all of us do them except one, there's no words inside the human language, there's no sentence he could possibly construct, no matter how compendious or concise or how intelligent the man is, that will allow us to forgive him for failing. You failed. Oh, but I was busy, da-da. We did them. You're a bitch. Shut up. We don't accept excuses. That is it. It's true. So yeah. next day he's going to go, well, they ain't going to listen to my bullshit. I better just fucking do it. How do, how do so you, that's that's the bottom line. It's so, all who you surround yourself with. Yeah. Yeah. It's so 100%. cliche, but it's so true. It's facts. Yeah. But I, there was a point where you were the most searched guy on Google, right? Yeah. Is there ever a point where you were like, I'm getting content? Or do you always, like, how do you strive for more? Bro, that's that's innate inside of me. You, I, I, we talked about this. You're the most viral sensation in the shortest amount of time, I think, of all time. Of all time. The way so we how, talking about that. How do you fucking stay motivated when you're I like, haven't I'm a missed man. a day of work in 10 years? I've never had a day off. Maybe I've had days where I've gone driving in the supercars and I've only done two hours work instead of eight hours. I've never had a day where I thought, fuck it, I'm not gonna work. Never once ever. That my screen time on my phone is nine hours a day every fucking day. <laughs> I do not miss a day of work ever. If I'm the most viral Googled man on the earth, it does not change a fucking thing. I am working. Earth must be conquered. The matrix must be attacked and shattered. <laughs> I do not stop. I will not quit. I will not surrender. I am not that person. I have zero interest in rest or respite. It's bullshit for cowards. The, even the idea of resting aggravates my mind. <laughs> so what, what, I'm supposed to do this? But, wait, wait, let me practice. Sure. Yeah, that sucks. No, but is there... That sucks. Bro, I got shit to do. Like, yeah. with like, me, I, I can't even contemplate the idea. People say to me, if I had your money, Tate, you know, I just go, you know, I just go chill. That's why you'll never have my money, dummy. Well, here, here's you my just question. Want to go do that, nothing. Though. I don't want to do nothing. Do you I want to do shit. Do you have goals that <laughs> do you have goals that you like want to accomplish that you haven't yet accomplished? I don't even have goals. I don't even make it. I don't even write down goals as such. I just do the right thing every single day and it compounds and it's momentum. You, like if, if I were to go in the gym and say, I want to, I mean, sure, maybe goals are good. I don't know. Everyone has different methods, but I don't go in the gym going, I want to get this strong by this date that I just go, I'll go to the gym and I just fucking train as hard as I possibly can. And the next day I just go in the gym and train as hard as I possibly can. I just do what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Like I said earlier, the universe is absolutely and utterly extremely giving. If you're the guy who does what you're supposed to do on time every fucking day and you don't quit, you don't give up and you just continue to do it, they'll give you what you want. I've never seen anyone fail that way. I've never seen anyone go, I really want it. So I'm going to go get it and then fail. Never. So I've true, never bro. seen anyone. So it when someone so goes, I really want it and I ain't got it. They're a fucking liar. Well, They're I, all liars. How are you so good? Hey, he has an answer for every I, I, question we ask him. Of it's course insane. he's smart. How? So here's the thing. How do you have that? Because he's smart. That's right. Every he's fucking Tate. question so, we throw to me is a so, fucking genius answer. I don't understand. I got an, I got another question. So like, I, I think uh, I think people just fail to, uh, I don't know, allow allow it to happen, right? Like we're talking about this idea of accomplishing something, right? I think what happens is people quit before they get there, right? So you obviously weren't you were always Andrew Tate, but you weren't Andrew Tate as we know him today, right? Mm -hmm. And so people see someone's success and they go, oh man, why do you think people quit before? Because look at I, what you just said about being able to succeed when you do everything right. I, I know I felt ways in my life when I, I did everything right, I did everything, I did everything right and I still got shit on and I still got shit on and I still had setbacks, but I just kept going, right? 
have you ever in your life felt at a point where you're like, where you felt like, damn, I'm getting shit on, even though I know that in my heart I'm doing the right things? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What were those like? Yeah, completely. And I mean, like I've lost fights or something and you're like, I fucking trained so fucking hard and I was winning every round and I just got caught. And like there's there's times where you feel like shit completely. What about taking advantage of by like people or like business partners or friends or. Yeah, I mean, that kind of thing's happened as well. But I, I don't I've never seen somebody who loses faith in themselves end up succeeding. You, you have to I keep the it. faith in yourself. If you see somebody who is George. Sorry, one second. Is Georgiana here? Yeah, to get get some water, sparkling water. Gabe, oh, this is great. You know what? Yeah. You know what? This yeah. is sparkling water. That's for rich Yo. people, right? Yeah, for that's rich funny. people. Yeah, I, I see what you're doing there, Gabe. Do you sparkling water is for our team uh-huh. as you well. Got, hold on, hold on. You no, got my boy Steve. Water for us sparkling, water. sparkling yeah, water. Straight up. Sparkling. You like sparkling water? Yeah, for sure. Gabe, I, I don't like sparkling. I love it, that right now. Why? I love it. Can we have four sparkling water? No, wait, Andrew. We have Fiji's for us, our team. No, we're getting sparkling, dude. We have our guy too. So just so you know, I know you're trying to flex. You got Gabe Fiji's. Anyway, that's um, top. That's top Z right there. That's like the he's lo- lowest letter in the alphabet. If, 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 top, top, yeah, Z. top Z. Top Z. Yeah. Tiny's clip, bro. Um, yo, if, if we want to do one if thing. If you lose though. faith in yourself, yeah, If the matrix sense. allows to, if you allow the matrix attack to convince you to not have faith in yourself, you're never gonna make it. Have you ever seen anybody who's done anything fantastic and they didn't have faith in themselves? When they got never. to the top, they go, I, oh, I just don't know. Da-da. Another thing that's interesting is I've never seen anybody do anything on accident. This is what's actually very interesting. When somebody tells me their goals, I ask what their plan is to achieve their goals and they never have one. And it's fucking dumb. Wait, if you, didn't you just say you didn't have any goal, like goals? Like- no, no, I don't. But I'm saying if someone has a goal, I yeah. say, well, what's your plan? And they haven't got a plan. I've never seen anyone do anything amazing on accident is my point. PG. So but you just said you, 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 you've gotten so far, you don't have any plans. I, no, no, but it's, it's certainly, I know what I'm supposed to do and I do it day after day. I don't have a pre-presented you know, goal by this date, but okay. I know I want to become stronger, so I just train, got for it, example. Got it, But what I'm saying is I've never seen anybody do anything amazing by accident. So sure. what this extrapolates out, let's, let's use the gym and money, right? Have you ever found a guy in the gym who's in fantastic shape and you said, why are you in such good shape? How'd you get so big? And he goes, Oops, just right. happened. I, like Dunno, I feel like you're giving <laughs> yeah. us. I feel like you're giving us a long answer for like hard work pays off. Well, no, but it's it's you have to know you if you you're not going to do it accidentally. You have to do the right things every single yeah. day. Yeah, okay. and it's the same with money, right? If I meet somebody and they're loaded, they're like, "How'd you make so much money?" Well, this is what I did. How much I money do you have? This. How much money do I have? Yeah, Let's talk about fucking that. Tell you. Well, no, but we'll guess in a minute. But um, uh, I did this. I did that. I spoke to this guy. I started this company. Da da da. If, when you ask the average guy, "Do you want to be rich?" He goes, "Yeah." How are you going to get rich? Don't know. Yeah, of course. So you're just going to, how'd you get rich? Oops. This just like, it's dumb shit. Like it's just people, people. And it's kind of amazing. The last five years have proved it, but the majority of people are just fucking sleepwalking, bro. They have no plan yeah. to achieve any of their goals. They have no, they don't try very hard at shit. Everything is someone else's fault. And when my ship comes in, don't worry. Nah, in a few years, I'm going to be here. How? You know, just, you know. You know, where do you, where do you like think they're just fucking from, amateurs. Though? Why they're do you think just, they feel that way? Where's that people come are from? taught that shit? They're dude. just amateur hour bullshit. Yeah. They're not professional at life. You have to be a life professional. Do you think there's certain people that are kind of like born like that and they just will never learn? No, I don't. I think it's to a degree. Obviously, there's going to be some genetic disposition, but I also think it's a mindset you can adopt as a whole. You have to be hard on yourself. You have to be extremely self-reflective. If I forget my house keys or my car keys, I punish myself for that. If I look for my phone, I can't find it within three minutes. I punish myself. How people so? people are taught to be hard. Oh, it's too good, bro. It's fuck. How no, do you but I do. Good. How? It's too good. How? Because I, I do that all the time. How do you come up with that answer? I'm That's bad what with I my know. wallet. Like Don't, I'll lose it a every, lot. If you lose your wallet, every time misplaced. you misplaced, every time this motherfucker's lost five wallets in a year. Every Lie. time, every time you misplace Three. one wallet. Every time you misplace your wallet and you yeah. can't find it within a certain time frame, give him a hundred dollars, and I guarantee you'll stop. Give yourself a punishment. No, well, let's raise it. Gotta be hard on yourself. Like, let me you have thousand. to punish. I don't know how to punish myself. Let's do a thousand. Can we do a thousand? Cool. We can do a thousand. Okay. You're rich, bro. Yeah. So you owe me money, no? Okay. Whatever. Give him a thousand. Give a thousand every time, and I guarantee you'll stop. You have to punish yourself. So my point is this. So the reason I'm making it is that. I talk about professionalism. It's very easy to be a professional at the big things if you're a professional at all the small things. I'm never late. I'm always up at the time I said I'm going to be up. I never miss that phone call I'm supposed to miss. I don't misplace my shit. I, I, it's dumb, normal stuff. And I hang around normal people and they're like, oh, wait, wait, where's my wallet? Wait, wait, wait. Well, oh, wait, oh, one oh, sec. I'm 10 minutes late. Of course you don't achieve shit. You're Hold a fucking on. dummy. But that's a tactic that he does so his friends will pay for his meals and shit. What are you talking about? The, you're the Mr. I forgot my wallet guy. Don't you even dare. I use Apple Pay, you fuck. Okay, but pay, places that don't take Apple Pay. I'm telling about? you right now. You're the guy who takes fucking chains and jewelry from Steve and you pretend like it's yours. You hit on chains. Why are you, you so to, triggered? You want me to go hard on you? No, but don't Is that what you want right bro. now? We're having you fun. You attack me, I'm going to get you back, bitch. Uh, can I borrow your car tomorrow? Which car? 
Which one? Which car? Which one do you think? Well, there's a Bugatti and a 765 outside. Let I me tell you the motherfucking let me tell you the, Bugatti. Let me tell you the interesting story behind that 765. Because I know you don't care, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway. All right, I do want to know. Is it really $5 million? The 765 or the Bugatti? Yeah. No, the, 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 the Bugatti, $5 million yeah, Bugatti. The Bugatti was 5.2. Who spends that on the car? Me. Top G. 5.2? 5.2 million. What, is it a one of one or what's the... No, this one of 60 with every single fucking option. Now, Are I don't you friends pierce... with anybody else who owns one? No. I don't know anyone else with a pure sport. A couple others have Chirons, but that's a Chiron Pure Sport. And then the options are on top. I don't want to piss Bugatti off by saying how much the options cost. But if you say, like, I want red calipers, they're like, yes, no problem, sir. <laughs> Cha-ching. Everything costs money. But they've right. been amazing to me. I love Bugatti. They've been amazing. Here's the and first I've been one. good for their brand. No, I'm not done talking about my cars. Listen. Please, go ahead. I have 28 cars. 28? 28. 28 supercars. I flew the Bugatti here. All in Romania? Are they? They're how all, many are in Dubai? They're all around the world. So this is the story I'm trying to tell you. I need one tomorrow, but yes. Uh, okay. So I flew the Bugatti here. And then I thought, that's only two seats. Me, my brother, my cousin, we might want to go driving. What's the second fastest car? The 765 is the second quickest, no doubt about it. So I'll fly one of my 765s. I have two. I have a coupe and a spider. But the coupe is having PPF on the paint, so it was busy. And the <laughs> spider was in Germany, and I was trying to organize a flight. I, I was speaking to this German guy, my contact. He was being a dickhead, you know, Germans, whatever. So I was just like, all right, fuck you. So I already have two of the car. So then I got here, and I had to buy another one. So I bought that yesterday because... What would you buy yesterday? The 765s, Ferrari? now I have three of them. Oh my God. I have three bro. 765s. So I can't wait to get them all home in Romania and put them on the driveway, like bam, 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 three different colors. What's your like primary source of income? I'm a priest. I will never reveal that. I'm a priest. I'm this a priest. A fucking priest. I'm fighting the forces of Satan. Wow. That, we know I'm that. sitting here attacking the Matrix, trying to save us all from ourselves. But you're I buying 28 supercars. Hold on, weren't you, weren't you an atheist at once? I was at one point, yeah. Yeah. But now, now I'm absolutely and utterly completely religious. Because you believe in evil, huh? You because I've seen the evil. Yeah. I've seen evil. What's your what's your what's, all, what's your religion? I it's kind of like a interesting hybrid. When I'm in Dubai, I'm happy to be Muslim, <laughs> and when I'm in Romania, I'm happy to be Christian. I, love I just that. I just respect the idea of God. No, I yeah, get I agree. I I'm just trying, regardless of where I am, I respect the idea of God. And when you look at the most heinous crimes and the most heinous things that are happening on the planet, it's usually done by atheists in the name of atheism and they have no morality, no baseline morality. Yeah. Everything's fine, nothing matters. We can do this dumb shit. Well, and a lot of shit's see, done in the name of religion too, though. No, of course. And it was in the olden days, but I also believe that humans need to believe in something. And if they don't believe in religion, they believe in wokeness. And I think that's far more destructive than any religion. What's story. the cash value of all your cars? 28. 15, 20, maybe, 20, maybe about 20, 21. 21 mil? About that. Yeah. God damn. These are the viral, and, uh, these are the viral what, questions what you're asking we, him now? Yeah. Well, what can we borrow tomorrow? Nothing. Why? I just Isn't that the Chop G way? Take care of your boys. We're in a circle yeah, right here. Fuck? Yeah. It you goes know, Tristan, not let me, drive me the Bugatti. Kyle. Sorry, bro. Me? Sorry, G. I mean, him? Like <laughs> me, though. No, why Sorry, are you G. trying to throw shade? We're, we the only song. person who's ever driven it is actually, besides me and Tristan, is actually a girl. My, my, uh, my That's it. what? See, yeah. last fucking pod, you said oh, no girls are going back in the way. Capper! Cap artist! That's why I said no. it. Give my boy That's a cap artist. What did Piers Morgan do to you? That's why I said it. Dude, yeah, now you're performing. Here we go. I'm about to finish. First play by Rumble. Can I finish it? Go ahead. My my personal assistant, who's worked for me for eight years, moved it a meter. She moved it about a foot. To get the other car out <laughs> for the first time the other day. Oh, so this is this it. is driving it. So okay, she just reversed it like this. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So my moves. personal assistant of eight years moved the car by about fifteen inches. Oh Besides that, it's me and Tristan. That's a start. All right. I mean, I don't even no, want to ask. I, I feel embarrassed the asking these. Let's ask. Go. What are you embarrassed to ask, dude? Because they didn't come from me. It's okay. It's just you gotta read it. Go you gotta read it, bro. Okay. You're fine. You're good. Okay. First one. Uh, would you ever, or if she lets you smash on the first night, is she wifey material or no? You know what? I've actually had girls I slept with on the first night who turned out to be very nice women, and they stayed and they were loyal and everything. I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a complete indicator. I okay. don't know. I will tell the world a little yeah. bit of free game. Right. My my view of an indicator of whether a girl's good or not. Oh yeah, go for it. I'll get this is from free game. Yeah. Uh, why am I gonna get in trouble? Let me think about it for a second. Oh, yeah, no, be no, careful because now you're on our. We'll shit. cut it out if we have to, but we kind of want to know. This. Who cares? So this is some game. So I the woman has the power the whole way through the dating, right? Until you sleep with her, she has the power. Because she's in charge. Because you, she's the prize. You want her. A lot of men say I'm the prize, but most of those motherfuckers say that dumb shit ain't the prize for nothing. They're, <laughs> They're nerds, right? So she has the power. She's the gatekeeper. The first time that power dynamic changes is after you sleep together. Because now, if she doesn't keep you in a relationship, she's just a one-night stand or a hoe. Sure. You first sleep with her. Most men first sleep with a chick, and they continue to chase her, and they throw away their power. They get power, and it never crosses their mind. They throw it away. She stays in charge. What I have learned in my experiences, 
If you're dating a girl that she's in charge and you sleep together on the first night and after you sleep together, don't ignore her. Don't be a dickhead, but just kind of reduce your attention by 65%. Just mm -hmm. like cut it back down. I'll sleep with mm -hmm. you now, boom. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. You? Shorter replies, more delays, et cetera. Yes. And here's, how, here's what you learn. A good woman will then up her game and try harder to keep you because she doesn't want to just go sleep with some other guy because she slept with a guy. It's a big deal for her. She has a pure heart. She'll try for you. If you cut your attention down on a bitch and she just goes, well, fuck it. I'll go fuck someone else. Yeah. Or I'll just go on a boat in Miami next party. Oh, or she stops replying. Then she did she you a favor. She did you well, a favor so, too. Then. Yeah. yeah. So but the I'll easiest way to tell if a girl's good or not is after the first time you sleep with her to see her involvement in the relationship post that day. Most men never do this test on a bitch. They never do it. So this is why they keep getting stung by fucking girls who ain't worth shit. I can tell if a girl's worth something or not. That's a very easy, there's a few other things, but I'll give that one for free. It's a very easy way. Because <laughs> a good woman ain't going to sleep with a guy and then just go, oh, he didn't text me very much. Fuck, I'll just go get a new dick. Those are, those are the ones you want to avoid. And then it avoid. fucks with them too because they're like, wait, did he not like it? Like, if well, that's a good woman will try thing, so yeah. a little bit. Yeah. It's the first time they'll be the one chasing you if you do it right. And then you can tell if you have a good one. If they do chase you after that, you have a good one. If they don't chase you after that, you'll be glad you didn't keep her anyway. Fast. Okay, what, here's what, the what next is, one. Well, wait, we got one more. I was going to talk about on the same lines. Is that okay? You want to, you, is that okay with you, dude? I think right, they'd rather sh shut the, the fuck fans, up real quick. But if you want to talk um, about, yo, let's take it back to fucking. No, they're not going to do that. <laughs> We're not talking about that. We're talking about girls right now. Motherfucker. <laughs> um, what are the biggest red flags when it comes to a woman? Like when you first, when you first mean you're trying to talk to her, what are the biggest red flags that pop up? You're like, okay, this is something I got to look out for as far as like yeah. you personally. Yeah. I mean, that's the only thing I'll truly. Stay with it, bro. That's, I, that's the only thing I'll. What do you mean? Keep. I'm staying at this crib. That's the only I'm thing tonight. What do you mean, dog? That's the only thing I'll truly judge a woman on because I think that's a very good test of character. Because if a woman destroys the stigma of just sleeping with a new man as soon as she's semi unhappy with the current scenario involving you, then you don't want to be in a relationship with that woman. Biggest red flag. Right? That's the biggest red flag. Yeah. But like, if you're dating a girl. I think I've said this stuff before. I don't like girls who are over sociable. I don't like girls who know lots of people. I don't like girls who are always out. I don't yeah. like girls who. <laughs> You've said that. Before. You said, said that on the last one. I said it on the last one. Like if, if I meet a girl and she's like, yeah, and I go here and I know this guy and then the manager of this place invites me here. And then on Thursday I got this and her whole schedule is just full all the time. It's just to me, that's the biggest red flag because girls like that always end up just knowing too many people and getting dragged to too many directions, too many people in their ear, too many guys getting attempt, too many people getting a pop at the champ. It's just, it's just long. This one I like, I like girls when you say, what are you doing? I don't know. Nothing. That's the one. This one's that's crazy. The one. Nothing. You're doing nothing you gotta, the next three weeks. That's who I want. Those girls are like, I'm, I'm going Cancun. Like, oh, this one's crazy. I don't know. You fly a girl out yeah. that you've been talking to. You spend a bunch of money on her. Take her shopping, but she doesn't smash. I don't think I'd take her shopping. Um, if I flew a girl out and, and we didn't get along and she decided not to, to sleep with me, then that's absolutely not really perfectly fine in every regard. Well, I would never want to sleep with a woman who didn't want to sleep with me. I think that's extremely bad energy. That's why I've never in my life paid for sex ever. I've never slept with a prostitute not ever. Not one hooker. Never once. I lived in Thailand for a year and a half fighting. I must be the only guy who lived in Thailand never fucked a Thai girl. I like it. Rub and never. tug. Rub and tug. I, never. Never. Wow. I don't like the energy exchange of a girl who genuinely isn't into me. I think that's bad karma. It's bad juju. So I, if a girl, if I were to meet a girl and I were to fly her out and she'd go, I'm just not into you sexually, I'd be like, good. I don't want to get mixed up in that kind of negative energy exchange. Had you always been that way or is that? I think I've always pretty much been that way. I think the gratification of sleeping with a woman is not just about numbers and banging and stupid shit. The gratification is that she genuinely cares about you and loves you. I think that the love between two people is a powerful energy. I think that women, when they love you, can care for you and genuinely protect your spirit. Yeah. I've had experiences in my life. I'll tell you this, man. I've had times where girls who truly love me with all their heart will do anything for me. I've woken up and all three of them, different ones, all text me on the same day. I had a bad dream about you. Something bad's going to happen. And that day something bad happens. Oh, yeah. If a woman truly, truly loves you and truly cares about you, they have a, a degree of power and protection that's important. I don't want to mess with or be around a woman who's not infatuated with me. Sure. Any woman who I'm going to be with, I'm going to be her the center of her world. If I don't answer, she's panicking. If something bad happens to me, she's like, if I go to jail, she'll be there. I'm not going to be with some bitch who's like, yeah, he's cool. Mm. But is I, that I, don't, you? I think that's just negative. I'm not, I don't want to do you that. Or her? Every woman, every woman who's around me, I am the center of her universe. Is that you that makes her like that? Or is that her naturally? Uh, I feel, well, that's a good question. Obviously, I'm me. Yes. I'm me. But I think that if a woman truly understands in many different areas that they can hand their life into your hands and you can take care of them, including financially in every single way, yeah. then you're going to be the center of the universe. You're their everything, right? Sure. If you were to disappear one day, their whole world would collapse. Their social circle would collapse. Their finances would collapse. Their worldview would collapse. Their protection would collapse. The places they go, where they're staying, everything would just collapse. You're the center of their world. That's the kind of girl I want to be associated with. If I was with a girl, just like she had her own life and I had my own life and we kind of linked up. That's not my thing. I'm not interested. In Do you think you're the best guy at podcasts? 
Top G. No, Going um, on, guess. Do you no, think you're but, the best? But no, but what was the original question? Because we've gone off on a tangent. What was the original question? Bush or no bush? No. Huh. <laughs> what do you do if you fly a girl? Like take her shopping. And she the original smack. question I want to answer. The question I want to answer is the reason I wouldn't. Oh, cool. The reason I wouldn't take her. Sh the reason I wouldn't take her shopping before. Let me see the other question. Before we slept together is I just think that's a, a negative frame to set. I don't think that's a good frame that's to set. I think that's a, <laughs> a strange dynamic. But you talked about the energy, right? The yep. energy in relationship to a woman and you dating her yep. and her being in your life. Yep. And you talked about if you're genuinely in it and you want her to genuinely in it because of that, like good energy yep. you're saying that equally as if there's you're just like kind of frivolously having sex with women and just having sex to have sex and maybe she's here but you're not actually building any sort of bond that, that also that builds like a certain sense of negative energy in your life well a life is an energy exchange yeah if you look at a fight right you have to make sure the energy you spend punching him does more damage or takes away more energy than you've expended. If you, that's, why, that's why missing is a big problem. If you miss all the time, then you've wasted energy with no net gain, right? So life's an energy exchange. This is how it works. If you're out here just fucking bitches who don't care about you, you are wasting enormous energy. And let's, yeah. talk, let's talk about this in length, right? We can talk about it first financially. You're going out, you're spending money, you're taking her out, taking her dinner, you're spending money. That's the first thing. But the second thing is, a lot of men, especially if they're insecure, really feel like they get a victory if they fuck a girl. And at a certain status of man, that disappears. And I'm going to state this once again without arrogance. I go out to Dubai now. I pick up a girl in the club. I come back here. I fuck her. She doesn't care about me. I don't care about her. Hey, I fucked this hot girl. I've got a fucking $5.2 million Bugatti. We're coming back to a $48 million mansion on the Palm. I'm the richest guy in the fucking club. I'm top G, whatever, whatever. I sleep with her. Why? I put all the energy in yeah, all why? night, smashing her right. She yeah. just lays there chilling. That's the best night of her life. And I'm going to go there. Did I, <laughs> did I win? You know, I didn't, she you fucking won. gave that shit up. I just gave it all up. Yeah, she what? used to talk about riding in the Bugatti. She has a picture on the Instagram with my, in the Bugatti chair. She's here walking around doing Instagram stories here, pissing yeah. off her ex in my house. She Yo. gets fucking slammed right. She doesn't do nothing for me. Nothing. The only thing a woman can give me back at my status uh, in life is absolute cool. devotion to protect my spirit. I need a woman who loves me completely and utterly. I don't expect her to have financial incentive to look after me. I don't expect her to be physically capable of doing, dealing with my problems. I don't expect her to be even, my problems are very complex. I don't expect her to be sitting there on a computer trying to work them out. I expect her to sit there and go, I love you so much. I'm just worried about you and I just care about you. Everything's about love. You. That, it's all about love. What yeah. if now what? that's what I want? Because that's a fair exchange. I can take a woman all around the world, spend a bunch of money on her. I can be top G, spend all this money, give her a life she could never see. If she truly, if I am truly the center of her her universe, she is giving me value back, and that's why I'm not going to go out here and fuck bitches who barely care about me or just famoose a bitch in a club for a one night because she's winning. I'm just, it's like throwing money down the drain. What if Kim Kardashian He's, slides in your DMs and says, "Hey Tate, I want a piece of that." How are you responding? I'm kind of careful about talking about celebrities. He's now trying to get the TikTok. I end right up there. meeting them all. A woman's job is, in, in my view, the women who mean the most to me are the women who truly protect my spirit by just loving me and caring about me and using their intuition to truly want the absolute best this. for me. The, that is so I important. I fucking love this. I fucking true, love this. It's true. Fucking love this. It's true. Yeah, you're the go. So we got it. It's important. And, and that's why if I meet a girl and she's half into me or some frivolous shit that, uh, or if I had a girl, she had her own life, I had my own life, but she was hot. Sometimes we smashed. I would see that as a net loss of energy for me. I'd say, no, it's a net loss. I'm the one doing the work. I'm the one doing all the fucking work. Like I always will be. I don't know. Maybe some of these other dudes Even get pegged like and that? shit. I'm the one doing all the fucking work. So it's just, why am I doing it? She's winning. I don't want that. I want it to be a mutual exchange. And that's why a woman who truly cares about me, it's amazing. I'll tell you how this is true in case anyone doubts me at home. Anyone thinks I'm talking shit. Next time you are sick. No, no. Next time you are seriously sick. Next time you are genuinely sick and you're ill in bed, you don't call your boys. Who do you call? You call oh a chick. Oh my God, that's a fact. You call a chick. That's a fucking fact, <laughs> dude. And Holy they, shit. And they sit next to you and they'll sit and get sick with you and they'll hug oh, you sick. and they'll give you their energy and their love and you'll feel better. Yeah. It's a real thing. I when agree. you're sick, you notice it. I have that all the time. That's so true. Every, every when you're sick and a girl loves you, she will fucking come in bed and, and she'll, she'll, and she'll make boy. you better. We wouldn't, we wouldn't do that. Like no, when no, a girl's sick, no. I'm like, yo, like get fuck? better. I would do that for either of you. What? If you guys need me when you're you. sick, I would fucking show up. Really? Yeah. No, I like do that. we but, don't want you to cuddle in bed though. No, I don't want to cuddle, but I'll be I'll fucking postmates. Even if you're sick, you don't want your boys. You want a chick because they have a healing energy. They love you. A sick, a sick blowy doesn't hurt too. 
That's true. Fuck that. <laughs> There's, if you're, it's a healing energy. So my point is that okay. why only apply that when you're sick? Why not apply that to your entire life? Why not just huh? every single woman yeah. who sees you? If I walk in the room and one of my chicks sees me walk in the room, I can see in her eyes like, like Christmas. Yeah. That's what I want. I don't want just some bitch who's hot and I just fuck her. Can, that's a loss for me. I'm not interested yeah. in that. Tropical. So I don't, pick, I don't pick up chicks anymore. I don't run out here do, picking do up a, chicks and Do you have a main girl? Them. I'm not gonna talk about my personal life because sure. I'll tell you why. Because sure. there's feral psychopaths who are out to tr who have attempted to destroy me. So I, I have that. to be very careful what I say now. No worries. So like, there's literally feral psychopaths who are on a mission Sweet. to try. Sweet. and came in for a question yeah. here. Oh yeah, run it. Go oh, for no, it. No, no, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, blend in it. I, I, I was gotta, gonna say, I just think I, this is the kind of stuff that I think is so <laughs> important for young men to actually hear. And this is like just not talked about enough. The fact that like having you know, relationships with a woman is not just about sex. Like, Absolutely, it's, it's about also. All this other stuff that we're talking about, the energy, like how you feel in it. And I, and I was talking to the boys earlier about like, oh, I'm trying to settle down. I'm trying to have a kid in general. But my biggest issue was always like just allowing myself to fully, in a sense, be okay with myself. Like yep. I've struggled with that my whole life. Yep. And uh, I'm kind of at a point in my life where I'm trying to like decide who the right person is for me to, to, to like basically have a kid with. Yep. Right? I'm 33 years old. Yep. And uh, it's something that I really want to do. How do you know <laughs> when is the right time and how do you know when is the right person? And I was kind of talking to them a little bit about it, but I just wanted your perspective on this. That's a really good question, man. That's 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 deep. It one. It's a good one. But but it's, no, it is. I asked it though no, because I, when I look for things, I look for everything you just said, which is like, who's the person that you you go towards that is like healing, that is yeah. like loving, is yeah. more than just pussy and some whatever yeah. ass, whatever. So. Let me apply it to a slightly different scenario. Let's look at it from a business perspective, right? So I, I, I probably have maybe 90 to 100 people who work for me. And I would not, if I had somebody who wasn't very capable, but was absolutely and utterly dedicated and completely loyal, I, would, I wouldn't fire them. Whereas if I had a guy who's, no, I'm, I'm not saying they're complete useless. I'm saying they fuck up a bit in there, but they try their absolute best. They're loyal to the cause. They're there on time. They really give it their all. And perhaps they're not as capable as some other people. Okay. I think loyalty and absolute dedication is an extremely important thing. Sure. Yeah. I, if, if I were to have a kid with a woman, my biggest thing to look for above looks, above even her intellect, it would be two things. It'd be one, the family she has around her. And we'll talk about that why in a second. And two would be how dedicated she is to me. If you were to give me a woman... And she, she, her, she was dedicated to me to the end and I could see it. No matter what, I'm the man she wants. She, she only talks about how I'm the only man she wants. She doesn't want anyone else. That's what I'd be interested in having a kid with because you never know what's going to happen in life. And if it all goes wrong for me, I can't be sitting in the cell thinking my baby mama's fucking somebody else. I can't handle okay. it. So that, I need that dedication. <laughs> the second thing when it comes to kids is family. And I'll tell you why. And this extrapolates out. This is actually very important because when a man, I think a lot of the reason why men today, especially older men are slightly a bit unhappy is there's, also, there's always going to be a degree of rebel or a degree of adventure that every man needs to feel satisfied. And once you have a child, if you completely get rid of those things and only live and exist for the baby, especially when it's very young, when it's older, it's a bit different. When you exist only for the baby and become a second mother, you're going to be very unhappy as a man. Mm -hmm. You're going to need your time away as a man. And the woman's going to be stuck with just the baby and be unhappy. And in my experience, people I know, if you find a woman with a good family, like she has a sister who has a kid and her mom's around and the family unit's strong, and they say it takes a village to raise a kid. Yeah. yeah you know, if there's other women and other, because women are great with babies. Sure. They love that shit. So like, if, if you were to ask me if I had to have a kid who'd be the ideal target, it'd be a woman with a couple mm -hmm. sisters and a mom and they all have young kids. And now she has a kid and they get to do a bunch of kid shit together. And I don't really want to go see Frozen. It's bullshit. I'm out with my boys. <laughs> I'm in the gym. They're doing the Frozen shit. Boom, boom. You need a good family unit and you need someone who's dedicated to you. And then, 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 yeah. bro, Brad, okay, she's Frozen, seven, Brad, so I got to ask something real quick. Wait, yeah. wait, what, what go if, ahead. What if you really love this girl, right? But she has crazy daddy issues. What does that mean? Like she, she doesn't talk to her family. She doesn't talk to her parents. That's fine. I'm, I'm just talking about an, uh, an ideal scenario. Do you make exceptions? Like, Yeah, of course I'd make exceptions. But you can also extrapolate that, right? So you can fix the problem. So let's say I found the perfect girl in every way, but she didn't have a strong family unit. I'd, I'd fix that myself. I'd go to Tristan and say, cool. Who's your main chick? Bang. All right. These two chicks are going to live together. Bang. You knock her up. I'll knock my one up. Boom. Now she has her own family. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Wait, wait, wait. That's too good. Done. Fuck. It's done. You're not Did you have that planned? No. Dog. It's just the truth. Yo, how, bro, how, you're a fucking comedian. Wait, so let me get in here. But it's, it's not a hundred percent. I'll fix the issue. Bro, you question. need you need women around but, you. You need the baby atmosphere. Boom, let's make it. Bang, but now bang, you gotta bang, convince, bang. But now you gotta convince Tristan to have a kid with some girl that maybe he doesn't want to have a kid. He's upstairs. <laughs> Do this. Cool. Yo, 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 you're yo. so done. I understand Brothers, what you're saying. Though. I no, understand. But you can also create an environment then. Then create an environment around it. Or, yeah, or why not? Why not? Or, no, no, no. Introduce her to your family, your That's sister, your mother. Why not get, have get Tristan be her, her new brother? 
Get a family. Yeah, get a family unit. I think that it takes a village to raise children. I think some of the biggest problems with the world today are now that a lot of people are isolated and the nuclear family is kind of broken down. I know when I was young, I was raised with a bunch of cousins, aunts, uncles. That it's not so much like that anymore. I think it was better when we were larger groups. And I think that if you can try and keep that involved, it's also a lot better for the man because you're going to need your freedom. Yeah. You can't just. I've had a baby now, so my life's over. And and I'm and I think with women, to a degree, if they have a baby and they sacrifice certain parts of their life for the baby. I, for some reason, I think they're more biologically positioned to do that. If you look at men, there's studies that show if a man hangs around a baby, his testosterone level goes off the roof and they get depressed and all these things because you're just not set up for it. I mean, I've been around children crying or screaming and the chicks don't seem to care, but all the men are like, it's just yeah. a thing. No, it's, the just guys a thing. Plan, yeah. it's just a weird thing. So I think that you need to keep that in mind and plan ahead for it. And then, then you'll be happier overall. Andrew, how would you deal with a father that doesn't like you? Like, say you're with a girl, and like he's just not fucking with you. Yeah. Yo, that wasn't very... Per- uh, just, yeah. that felt no, I really don't know. Yeah. That felt super personal. That's okay. I'm, I'm serious. That's okay. Right. Okay, so I would... Yeah, how I, do you impress the fathers? Yeah, I would accept that. I feel everything. like you're good with dads. Yeah, I, I, I am. I've never had that scenario. But well, what about your relationship with your father? I, my, me and my dad always got along. It's creating so, your value. So well. But I would, I, would, I would accept everything in life is my fault, because that's how I work as a person. I would accept that him disliking me is my fault. I would be a man about it and I would ask him what he's unhappy about and he might be fucking right. I'd sit there and go, what, what do you dislike about me? So just confront the dad. Not confront in a negative way. I'll just say, look, I'm here with your daughter. I really care about her. I, it, she's made it clear or I get the impression that you're not particularly happy with me. Is there anything I can do? I just want to show you respect. You're a bit older than me. I want to show you enough respect to ask if there's anything about me that particularly upsets you. It's a power so, and, 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 yeah, and let, yeah. and, like, Because he'll respect you more. Men respect men who stand up for themselves. Yeah, 100%. So the first thing he'll do is respect you more for even asking instead of hiding away from the dude. If you yeah. say it in a respectful but way. You say it in a respectful yeah. way. And then he'll give you a bunch of answers and then you have to be non-emotional and be professional. Listen to the answers. Don't get defensive and sit there and go, you know what? 70% of so, them are probably So what do you think's right. better? What do you think is better, like to be supportive or tough love? In in what scenario? What, your, you have, you have no your father with your Fuck. son. Why, why do you think? <laughs> sorry. Why what? do you think That's it's so hard? I went through, Brad. It's just shut the fuck up for a second. Why do you think it's so hard for, for men to be able to be vulnerable with themselves? Because like, that's hard for a guy who's like, yo, men are, are we're, I guess I we're know. taught to be here. so strong and so like powerful that we're not taught to be able to be vulnerable to say, to, like, to go listen to that criticism without being like, well, fuck you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? A lot of it's the internet, man. A lot of it's the internet. People have lost the whole fucking face-to-face thing. Yeah. Like I'm 36, right? So I'm a slightly older generation. But back in my day, if you wanted a chick, you had to go up and say hello. There was no tin, no internet, nothing. Everything was in person. You want to do a business deal, it was in person. It was in person, it was in person. And I think a lot of men, who, if their dad doesn't like him, would be too scared or too intimidated or too nervous or too egotistical or arrogant to just go and sit there and say, bro, she's your daughter. You ra-. I'm telling you, there's not a dad on earth who I couldn't sit there and say, listen, I, see, I understand you've seen things on the internet about me. I understand the media said a bunch of things. I know she's your daughter. You've raised her your whole <laughs> life. I can see how close you are. She really loves you. She talks about you in such a positive way. If we're going to be together a long time, I'm going to end up part of this family. That must there, be so tough. Would you like to talk about it? Let's see what he said. Dude, what he just said. He said, well, wait, that must, that be, must so be so tough. The so point is, why do you think it's so no, hard for people? Fact. But if oh, you shut did- the fuck up for a second. Shut up, bro. For real. Why do you think it's so hard? It's hard. It's but it it <laughs> it is fuck? hard, and it's hard because the internet has destroyed. It's made everyone socially awkward, and also, uh, I I think that some of the basic tenets of how humans have been raised for a very long time have been destroyed. Like basic shit, like respect your elders, bro. Like he's older than All you, right. and that's his daughter, and he doesn't like you. He's allowed to not like you. That's his daughter, bro. He's older than you, and that's his daughter. You need to humble yourself. It's arrogance. We live in a world now where all these young kids on the internet and shit, they're all arrogant as fuck. And if I'm going to humble myself, right, Mr. Fucking $200 million, and I'm going to humble myself to go sit there. Is that what you got? Is that what you got? Is that what he he, he saw? That's cap. Suck it in. But uh, no, if I'm going to humble myself, you have to know your position, right? No one's top dog all the time. Never. If I yeah, I'm I might be top dog in certain scenarios. Who do you but think is top to, dog to you? Bro, if I let him answer the fucking question. I may not be top dog. I'm it's not any dare. Yeah, dude. I may be top dog in certain Shut scenario, up, right? Yeah. In certain scenario, I'm top dog. But if I change, if I go skiing, I'm not top dog. I can't yeah. ski, right? So when it comes to a man raising a woman or raising a daughter for fucking 28 years, or however old she is, and dedicating his life to her, knowing he'd take a bullet for her, you can't be the top dog and go, I don't owe this man an explanation. You have to humble yourself and sit there and say, listen, he's upset. And I'm telling you, by even asking the question in a respectful way, you've already taken one step forward. forward. <laughs> you already have, regardless of what he says. Now, he may say a bunch of shit that you can't help. He may be a piece of shit. He may be racist. He may be whatever. But it's good to at least hear the man out. And you may be surprised. I guarantee 95% of the time, he's just going to say something like, I don't think you're serious about her. You're not gonna, you don't care about her. And you can probably fix it. 
Yeah. So if a, if a dad wasn't that's that, a, that's a power. Move, if a dad yeah. wasn't that into me, I'd fix it. Everything in life is my fault. He has a perception of me. That perception is my fault. And I would address the perception and attempt to fix it. Are we gonna, That's why I've never had a parents. I've never had parents, any woman I've been associated with ever, just like me. I've well, never had it. Are we going to see a baby G soon or no? Of course. How, how far out? One on the way? Who, listen, if I baby had- G? If we I, need a baby G, bro. If I had children, I wouldn't say on the internet because feral psychopaths are aiming to destroy me. And when I have children, I will not say on the internet because feral psychopaths are aiming to destroy me. So maybe you have some. My, ch my children will grow- in anonymity because I don't see the point in flashing them off on Instagram. And also my children will not grow rich because they need to be poor. So I don't, all this lifestyle they're gonna get fucking none of. So Inheritance, what do you think about that? I, I know that the best life, the best possible start you can have in life is to be from good parents and no money. So I'm gonna make sure that happens. I'm not gonna be okay. having rich kids. Wanna... I'm not gonna have spoiled kids. So yeah, good? so that's the answer. That's the, that's, that's the answer. You can fix the dad shit. You can always fix it. No, you're the goat. I mean, that dad shit is yeah, so right. interesting. These guys are. Salim probably isn't. Salim, Salim, nah, Salim's it, got some questions. That shit, that it's, I mean, obviously with you, yeah. that's like a totally different story for me, like with videos, because yeah. I do videos with girls all the time. Yeah. It's always like, fuck, man. Okay, like, but, but, put, this guy put your, oh, you're, yeah, you're a huge dad put, guy, put, though, no? Oh yeah, I'm great with dads too, bro. But it's just, it's, it's, they get out on the golf course with them too. Put, put your, put yourself in his shoes, right? I get it, yeah. Like what? I'm, I'm, I would be an arrogant. The, the biggest problem with the world today, and I get called arrogant all the time, but I actually don't like to think I Does am. Does that bother you or no? No, because it's not true. But I actually don't like to think I am. But the biggest problem with the world today is the absolute amount of brutal arrogance that people have inside of them. Everyone's so ridiculously. Arrogant. I get what you're saying. How can How, you say that when people no, feel no, that but, way about no, you? No, but me. Listen, what kind of person would I be to sit to a woman and go, "How dare your dad not like me? Look at the shit they're right by me on the internet." Well, how arrogant would I have to I be to go that fuck that guy? Though. That'd just be dumb. I'd be like, yeah. I completely get it. Let's go see your dad. Let me go talk to the dude. Yeah, I, th I think this thing yeah. comes down to like, people are just not comfortable enough with being vulnerable. Completely. And they're not so, comfortable with normal I hate social the dad, human though, interaction. Bro. I hate but I mean, that's so, okay. I kind of like it, man. I don't like it. It's kind of interesting. Okay. Interesting. How do you think? It's always nervous the first time. How do you think someone can- be the godfather to my son? Yo, you're clipped right now, huh? Yo, shut the fuck up Mix in a water, bro. Chug a sparkling water. Would you or no? We'll talk about that later. Okay. Andrew. We need to drop you off um, at Ikea, bro. How do you think, how do you think uh, a young male can make himself, allow himself to be more vulnerable? Yeah. Like what are the steps he can take? Because I think that's the talk, biggest problem because a lot of it is like being uh, unwilling to confront something within yeah. themselves or being like, in this sense, being able to confront the dad because he can't take that criticism, right? Yeah. So how do you think a young male can build vulnerability in himself and be comfortable with it? Yeah. And that's a really good question. And I think you're never going to be good at something you don't practice. How do you not, do that? You just have to understand it's part of human nature and life is not always about being comfortable and you just have to practice it. And like I said, you can get a sales job or you can practice it or you can go to the, uh, I think facing confrontation in your life in general is going to apply. But the, yeah, a load, load of people are living very sheltered realities. There's a whole bunch of people who are just sitting on the internet, swiping on Tinder, talking to girls by text message at first, half knowing her before they meet her. And then when they meet an older dude who wants to sit there and look him in the eye and say, look, you're, you're, you're banging my daughter and you're acting like a piece of shit on the internet. I want to know the truth about it. They're going to sit there and go, oh, this is weird. It's not what, weird. What you're you weird. You're the weirdo. He's not the weirdo. He grew up in the, he grew up in the normal world. We've grown up in a world now which is completely and utterly fucked. Morality's yeah. fucked. That's Everything's fucked. Well, We're listen, the weirdos. He's not on, weird. Bro, I got to ask one thing. I'm curious. What do you think the percent of males, their success... Like their reason behind wanting to be successful is to get a girl. I think that uh, status signaling has been the same since the dawn. Like, do you of think human it's time. more money or they want a chick? I think that status signaling has been the dawn the same since the dawn of human time. I think that peacocks have feathers for a reason. I think the reason the kings of old got gold and conquered land was for pussy. I think men have always been the same. We've always managed. We've always wanted to s signal our status to get females. Yeah. And nothing's changed. Sure. We, it's, we don't want the big house and the nice car because we want to walk around a huge house to go toilet and we want to break speed limits. A lot of it is just, just a status signal to show the world, look, I'm important. Look what I've to done. To be accepted. To be but accepted. Why yeah, do you feel low, signal, But that's what I'm saying. Signal. Why do you think guys are so afraid to say, yo, I wanted to be successful. I wanted to make all these millions to get a girl. But it's not about being afraid to say it. I think that's just a, a, I think that's a given. We want, it's not about just to get a girl. You know what men also want? Men want respect of other men. Yeah. We want to be seen as, as we want to be respected, right? We Facts. don't want to walk into a room yeah. and not be respected. Sure. So there's a lot of things we do to be respected. It's the reason, That's certain men, it's the reason he's so fucking big. It's the reason I fought. Well, it's like, you want to be respected. You don't want to walk in a room and everyone go, fuck this guy, right? Yeah. You, you want to be respected by men and women alike. This, we're social animals. And this is why Alexander the Great conquered the known universe. This is yeah, why bro. Genghis Khan conquered basically the whole world and said, find something else. Find something else to me to conquer. Don't give a fuck. Find somebody and take it. Because you want to, I'm the, I'm the top G. 
That's yeah, life. That's why I conquered. Like, That's why I conquered the internet. Yo, yo, Dr. Go. Tate. Dr. Tate. You're yeah. the goat. Straight bro, up. Bro, like I, I, I mean, I grew up without a father in that sense. I, I, uh, the reason why you talk about being big, like the thing that that had me in the gym that made me feel like, okay, this is why this is so important to me, uh, is because I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be respected. I wanted to feel like, like I'm gonna say, like I've been saying this time, is I wanted to feel loved. And I thought that being bigger or being stronger, or like, would make me look obviously less weak to other men. I'd Completely. feel like maybe some acceptance of other people that I would consider father figures throughout my life. Yep. And uh, I, on top of that, the thing that I keep trying to get you to, to, to talk about or to answer is like the ability to be vulnerable as men is, is not something that we're taught. Is actually, In fact, it's something that I think we're, we're taught to not be vulnerable, to not be emotional, to not. But well, that, Tay, you're not but, a big but vulnerability that guy though, no, right? but, He's but, not, but, I just want to talk about no, it. No. But that discomfort that you just described has led to a massive positivity in your life. Absolutely. I can say the absolute same thing for fighting. I decided to go out and learn to fight to the level I learned to fight because there's a, I, I had a couple fights in school and I won them, but it was kind of close. And I was like, and that was too close for comfort. And I thought, fuck it, I'm going to go learn to fight. And it's absolutely often discomfort and trauma and bad things yeah. that will motivate you to go and do the most amazing things. Like, like we said, said earlier, earlier yeah. you have to take the negativity and use it in a positive manner. Like we said about stress, it can yeah. go in different directions. Just I'll tell you right now, if you were to say to me, Andrew, you have to make double the money you're currently making. What's the number one emotion you want to feel to do it? I'd say, heart, I'd say heartbreak. Yeah. Stress. Break my heart. Is Break my heart. I can't sleep. I'm furious. Break my heart and I'll make a fucking billion dollars. Yeah. Take all the negativity and turn it into positivity. So that trauma and all those bad things that happen, you can be very, very positive things and give you a positive aspect on life if you approach it in the right way. Most people are told when you feel sad, sit at home, be sad. It's not your fault. You've got a disease. You're depressed. Be a bitch about it. I, I argue the opposite. I say when you feel sad, good. Take all that energy and convert it into something that's going to be a positive force for your life. Would you say that even though even we're also taught to like stuff it away and not like, like not actually think about it? Not actually go through it, not actually process it. Don't embrace it and feel it. You should feel all of your emotions. If yeah. I feel sad, I embrace it and I feel it. I'll tell you right now, the largest monumental jumps in my life in terms of success is when I was pissed off or sad. Yeah, I mean, bro, like I could tell you like all the time I spent in the gym to build myself, I was using that stress. I was using that trauma to make myself better. Completely. And that's what made me who I am today. Absolutely. But all the bad things that happen to you and make you feel in a bad way. Some of those bad things made me feel in a bad way were the most important energy sources for the most monumental jumps in my life. The most, yeah. the biggest, I, I my just, biggest achievements. I just feel like people should be taught to be more vulnerable and raw with themselves to allow themselves to see that truth so that they can make that progress in their life. And That's not enough true. people are comfortable yeah. with that. Completely. Yeah, they hard, need heartbreak facts. made me go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah good. But, you, but you went crazy. And this is the thing. You went crazy. Like We've, success though. Success good. Well. Perfect. Yeah. But there's a whole bunch of men who go crazy and just fucking call a bitch a trillion times. Should have gone to the gym instead. Same energy in a different yeah. place. So yeah, you have to feel vulnerable. You have to feel the emotions and whether they're negative or positive, you have to embrace them and turn them into the best possible fuel to send yourself in your life. Is, yeah. there, a, yeah. is there anything we haven't yeah, covered that you want to talk about? Why are you trying to end the fucking podcast, dude? I'm not. Come on. No, I'm Still just saying. Gone. Yeah, you got any more questions in that little list? No, which you, you didn't want to answer <laughs> yeah. them. Those were fans. Yeah. Those were fan questions, Andrew. They were uh, fan questions. Yeah, you think I would write? No, something he like wrote that? those in the car on the way over here. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's you got there. a guy like that and a guy like me too that were like, "Yo, this guy's fucking pushing us to be better," but that's never seen. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I understand, but I think that personally, I think I'm in a redemption arc, and I think that whether it's the Bible or the Quran or a superhero movie, there's always a guy who's misunderstood and everyone thinks he's bad and then they realize they needed Batman after all. Can I join your team? Listen, 95, like I said, my, my team are monitoring social media contents in real dude, time. This guy's just jumping fucking Steve now. What's going on here, dude? It's cool. Come on. It's, uh, it's like peers all over again. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> but um, no, it's it's already happened It's and it's already done. And I have no problem with with people disliking me. I didn't go on the internet expecting everybody to like me. I know there's a bunch of people who are gonna misunderstand me. I know I'm doing good for the world. I live with a pure heart. I know that I'm a positive influence. I go to sleep with a clear conscience and that's what matters more to me than a bunch of bullshit and idiots. But yeah, what, what Brad was just saying is super important. I think that if you look at any man who's very good at being a man, most of them have had extremely traumatic lives. Yeah. If you're going to talk about the most brave man you can think of, he's been through trauma. If you think of the best soldier you can think of, he's been through trauma. You think about anything, the, the man who's going to charge into the burning building, the fireman, he's been through trauma. If you find a man who's never had any traumatic experiences, he's terrible at being a man. Yeah. He's weak and he's soft and he'll collapse and he's never struggled. I know me and I don't want to tell a bunch of stories on, on the internet, but I know all the shit I went through and all the pain I had to suffer to become the man I am. And every time I meet another guy who has his life in order, it's the same story. 
this fucked me up, but you know, I thought, fuck it, I'm gonna attack the world anyway. Yeah. And that's how it goes. So as a man, that's you're good. right, you're right. You have to be vulnerable, you have to feel it, you have to accept it, but you have to put it in a positive direction. This is what's so dangerous about what we were saying earlier, where people make excuses and externalize yeah. because they're taking that trauma and that pain instead of going, I fucked up. She left me because I wasn't good enough. I'm gonna become better. Instead, she is the problem. Yeah, like we it's saying. there. And then they lose their ability to go and become something. They lose their own motivational force. And then they sit there with a fucking ego and arrogance and go, I don't need to become any better. I can stay a jackass. It's all her fault. I'll find another one. And then it happens on repeat. And it just ends up a downward cycle of dumb yeah. shit. Do you think social, social media has added to be like, is it a net positive or net negative in this situation? That's and, good, and, and then social media as a whole, do you think it's net positive or net negative? That's a really good question. I think that certainly social media is definitely amplifying the depression amongst the population. I think that Instagram would be very depressing to have as Joe Schmo. Like it, like, because of the comparison? Because of the comparison. Man. Yeah. yeah, like if, if you're just the average dude on Insta. Uh, let's put it this way. I'm 36, right? In fact, I don't know why I'm saying that. I'm 35. I'm 36 in a few days. So I'm, I'm almost 36. But in my generation, if I think of the people who I went to school with, a couple of them have Instagram but they're very, very successful. And all the others who don't have Instagram, like about 80% of the people I knew from school don't have Insta. And when I've met them in real life by accident, they were completely just completely just normal dudes. And I think they don't have it because what are you who gonna the, show? What are you gonna show? Right. But who, the <laughs> you have nothing to put on there. So why are you gonna digest my content? You're just gonna be pissed off, right? Are you yeah. talking about so, the, the two that are popping or the 80 that are not? No, but I'm saying that for a lot of average guys, social media can be quite a negative experience of course especially for men and and same thing with women right you have we got it we got it girls. but yeah the the fucking for regular people it is fun it was yeah, her so i've been that guy though, too. but but do you use that energy as motivation that's what i did to get here straight or do up. you or do you use that's that why you just buy followers. followers i used to dm yeah, you, you and be like followers. i used to dm brad and be like i fucking that. hate you Stiny buy what? followers no, I'm, I'm yeah, But it's not about buying followers. It's about looking at somebody's lifestyle. By the way, I didn't do that. Wait, go ahead. <laughs> it's about looking at somebody's lifestyle and looking at the things they have and then saying, you know what? This is, this is, I, I, I'm going to get that by hook or by crook. I'm not going to give up. And it's like I said earlier, you can either be motivated by it or you can be jealous and downtrodden by it. And that's, that's your personal decision to make. Let's go. I've never been that guy. If you show me somebody who has something I want, I'm going to attempt to get it. I'm going to well, attempt to get it. And I'm a formidable opponent and I will not quit. I want like you to know we stand with you no matter what. Thank you, man. Straight up. You got us. still don't fuck with Ikea? Ikea, the furniture <laughs> yeah. store. Yeah. Ikea, yeah. Ikea, Ikea, is, Ikea is still the most depressing place on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It makes me sad. I can't go there. Bro, Tate sad. is the goat, though. Yeah. Like, you're, the, you're the perfect mixture of like funny, and if people can't see that you're joking, you're right. They're just fucking stupid. Yeah. But also the mix of motivational, too. But not only that, so, we're never going to conform to the bullshit. You got well, which, is, which is good. We'll and see I, if this they keep this up, though, right? We'll see we're we're going to put it up on YouTube. I told you maybe Spotify, but we'll try it on YouTube, and hopefully it stays up. We'll see what happens, but I think that... You think it'll stay up? Donald Trump... I said Donald Trump said it, his would get deleted. I didn't think so, but... He was right. Yeah. He was right. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I know that... Because uh, ours is a big platform, too, right? It's big, yeah. We're living in very interesting times, and... I don't think it matters whether times are turbulent or or the opposite or they're crazy. I think you still need to just try and become the best person you can be. And I think that by becoming the highest value individual you can be, your life's always going to be a better thing. And I think, yeah, the world's very interesting right now. All this censorship and stuff is kind of scary. But I'm very focused on myself and my team and the people I care about and the people I love. And I think you just keep doing that. Bro. And life will work out I mean, well. It sounds like adversity. That's how you thrive. So it makes sense for this. We wish you the best too with Rumble, all the success. So yeah. And I never smoked this ever, but I did it because I was in your house. And I was like, <laughs> no, here go. I gotta do welcome, it. welcome. Hopefully to the this stays team. up. If you guys are watching this, yeah. Watch it. I don't know. Yeah, Hopefully so it stays I'll, do, up. I'll do a quick plug. Drop, drop a thumbs up. Yeah, too. do a quick drop. Plug. Take a quick sec. Drop a thumbs up. Plug your shit. Plug your shit. Yeah. Cool. So I want to make something clear. It's actually interesting. When I became the most Google man on the planet, I had a bunch of offers from a bunch of companies trying to get me to sell stuff to people, et cetera. And I've never agreed to any of that. I've been always very, very careful of what I sell. Talking about this. Yeah, I've been very, very careful of the things I sell. The only, and I want to make this, this is half plug and half telling the world because also there's some people trying to scam in my name or use my name, et cetera. The only things I have are available on CobraTake.com. I have the War Room, which is an international network. It's people who all think like me and we discuss the things we're discussing on this pod. If we're talking about having a group of accountable friends that you can't make excuses for, the war room's a perfect example of that. And then I had Hustlers University, which everybody attacked and said was a scam. I'd actually like to take five minutes to talk about what bullshit that was. Because that was, that was the, a massive matrix attack. Go for it. So Hustlers University was a university in which we taught people how to make money online. It was $49 a month. And we had different ways we taught to make money. Stocks, crypto, copywriting, building websites, Amazon FBA, all these different things, right? We also had an affiliate section where after you've made X amount of money in another field, 
you can then get an affiliate link for HU and you can sell HU with an affiliate link. So the idea that it's a pyramid scheme is stupid because there's only two layers. There was the school and there was an affiliate link. There was no other pyramids to go to. Also, Amazon.com has affiliate links. You can go to Amazon.com right now, get an affiliate link for a lawnmower yeah. and go and sell a lawnmower with your link and get a cut of the money. So it's like basic internet marketing 101. Yeah. Everyone does it, right? So I had an affiliate program and when the matrix attacked me, they attacked HU saying it was some kind of pyramid scheme, some kind of scam. We had 175,000 students. There is no way I could have 175,000 students continuing to pay $50 a month. They were paying on repeat unless they were getting value. Attracting students for one off, fine. But retaining students is a completely different thing. What would you retain them for? Our average, average. our average retention at the time, because all the metrics are fucked since the cancellation, because a lot of our elements inside of the school got destroyed, which I'll get back to in a second. But four and a half, five months we had, and then we had a little oh, bit yeah. of drop off. But most people stayed, once they joined, they stayed for life. That's solid. Wow. Yeah. So because you're, it's, we have 18 professors in there. There's lessons every day. There's the community. There's calls, and it's really not hard to make more than 50 bucks a month off of a school when you're paying a little bit of attention. So sure. they're making more than they're earning, right? Yeah. So it was a large enterprise. It was never a scam in any regard. I've never sold a scam in any regard. It was never a pyramid scheme. That was all just bullshit from people who never even joined the program. It was interesting when the Matrix attacked me, people were doing reviews of HU. And they never even joined. They would go, here's my review of HU. Andrew Tate's a misogynist. Who wants to listen to him anyway? It's a scam. I was like, yeah, KSI, KSA you, got in there and said it was They didn't bullshit. even join. They never even, they didn't even log in. What the fuck do they know? So it's absolutely not really stupid. But on corporate.com, there's the war room. And then also we've got HU. We're rebranding it and relaunching it under a new name. It's actually kind of cool because when the matrix attacked me, they attempted to just destroy my payment processor and destroy the servers and everything we were using. So in real time, we've built all of our own. I've got my own bank now. I own a bank. I won't tell you, I won't tell you out what countries. I've got my own bank, do my own processing, my own servers, all everything. So my HU is still alive. The school's still alive. We teach people how to make money online. That's going to become the biggest thing in the world. We were at one point, we we're the largest educational platform on the internet, and we're going to continue to be so. And they can no longer cancel or attack that platform. So, if you want to find out where my things are, they're on corporatetech.com. It's the War Room and it's Hustlers University. They're both available on the website. And uh, I want people to use their brains and understand that you don't have 175,000 students all with positive reviews. Don't listen to some idiot who never even joined. That's kind of crazy. That's the one part of the Matrix attack that kind of upset me a little bit. Because it was, although it's all unfair, that was just that was just so openly ridiculous. I was just like, these people have not even joined, and they're sitting there going, "This is scam, bro." So we even talk about you sell crypto pump and dumps. Have you ever tried? These, to these influencers were literally selling NFT pump and dumps, and then calling me a fucking scammer. How, how, it was crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy when I'm teaching kids stuff. We had a kid at the height of it all, right? We had a kid with an affiliate link. He was 16 from Singapore, and he was doing 75 grand a month. How, 75 G's a month. He bought his mom a house. That's fuck. I got to ask. Bro, I'm, 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 in hel I'm helping the world. I'm a philanthropist. These people are full of shit. Have you ever, tr have you ever put out that data to show that proof so they can just people just shut the fuck up? The thing is with internet hate is no matter how much proof you show, they don't want to see it. They're okay. just going to ignore it. I've it's like, it's, it's, it's like, that. it's like the human trafficking thing, right? I've come out and said, look, case is closed. Remaining authorities, no case. Here's the paperwork. His house is ready for human trafficking. They just repeat the same. They're fucking yeah, yeah, dummies. They don't yeah. want to say the truth, right? I, I hear you. So it's all bullshit, but the school's still open. It's on carpetake.com. And then the war room is another level above that. They're all available. But I also want to say this because there's a bunch of people launching cryptos in my name and doing a bunch of dumb shit Shit's in my fake. name. And none of, it's, none of it's to do with me. I have those two things and those two things only because they're a genuine positive force for the world. The war room will allow you to have an accountable group of brothers that'll make you a better person. Hate you will allow you to make money. And those are the only two things I sell. I don't sell anything else. That's it. Because they're a positive force for the world. I live with a pure heart. I'm not to scam a bunch of kids on a fucking crypto pump and dump and then sit there and say that I'm somehow bad for the world with my stupid blonde haircut. Like those fuckers. I don't do that shit. Amazing. You sell workout programs too, though. I used to. I don't. I, I used to. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Yeah. I used to. I used to. I don't anymore. I used to. I used Fair. to sell fitness and that kind of thing. I don't. I don't do it anymore. Just um, those two things. Just those two things. I've got the war room, which is accountability and brotherhood, yep. which is something you can look in. It's a lot more detailed than that. So on corporate.com and hate you. If you want to make money online, I'll teach you how to make money online. I guarantee I can teach anybody, no matter how little experience you have, no matter if you live in a third world country, if you have an internet connection, you can make more money per month than you invest. Even if you invest $49 and make $100. You will make more money. I can teach people how to do that. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Done. Thank you for your time. Andrew oh, fucking Tate, baby. Thank you. Bro. Oh. Yes, thank you. Very Let's good go. Meet you. Done. Thanks, Thanks G. Man. That was Thanks, awesome. Bro. Thank you. Bro. Fucking crushed that. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> I kept wanting. I just want to keep going. <laughs> oh, yeah. Number three Wait, coming up. Yeah, yeah, sure.